What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to part two of our Guilds of Ravnica Allegiance set review. Set review from the internet. I'll be your host, Franklin. And he's your host, Roblin. Roblin. And we're going over the green cards. The gold cards. The gold cards and the gates today. The alliteration. Green, gold, and gates. Uh, but realistically, it's all colorless cards, not just gates, because I want to include the artifacts, because we don't see colors here on the on the set review. What are you talking about? And if you guys want to get 15% off some sweet, sweet, super comfortable micromodal underwear, check out meandies.com slash The link is in the description below. <clears throat> Look at this dumb idiot. Leo, yeah, 3-4 four for 4. Playable and in, in, in limited. But really barely. I mean, but he's cool. Biogenic. Now we're talking. Bio, someone played this against me yesterday. It was terrifying. <laughs> we got laser. Oh, we're your host, Laser Eyes and Savannah Beard. <laughs> If anything, my beard's like Badlands. Don't. Just embrace who you are, okay? So it, It's just who I want to be. We also have a thing of Hershey Kisses here that we'll be partaking from regularly to make sure we're sub sustained. And uh, Biogenic Ooze, five mana for a 2-2. Two -two. That's not impressive. We're, we're, both, we're, we're both thinking it, right? It's not impressive. No one wants to play this five mana for five mana 2-2. Two -two. However, when it comes into play, you make another 2-2. Two -two. So it's basically a five mana 4-4. Four -four. And then at the beginning of your end step, put a 1-1 counter on each ooze you control. So now it's a 5-mana 6-6. Six, six. This is like Whisperwood Elemental. And then for 4-mana, you get an ooze, a 2-2 two, two ooze. You can make a 2-2 two, two ooze. So this card has a lot going on, and it's actually quite terrifying. It is, but it's not constructed playable. You don't think so? Nope. Only, you only, this is only constructed playable in a pod deck. I don't think so, man. I like this card. I like this card a lot, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a hit of being wrong here. And I'm going to put it on the list. No, it, sh it should be on the list. Okay. Because I said so. Biogenic upgrade. F six mana for a sorcery. You're going to use those clamps? <laughs> Distribute three one encounters among one, two, or three target creatures, then double the number of one encounters on each of those. So you can put three 1-1 one, one counters on three guys, and they all get 2-2 two, two counters. Um, you can put three counters on one dude, and then it gets six counters. The point is you're getting six counters from this card alone. It's a weaker version of the instant from last set. <clears throat> what was the instant from last set? The triple giant growth. Oh, bounty? Maybe that's true. Billy, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate Oh, Hi. Billy, thank you so much for the gifted sub for Billy. Hello, Billy. Really appreciate it. So, not constructed playable. No. Six mana is too much for... No way. For, I actually like this card. This is a pod target. End raise forerunners. Eight mana for a 7-7. Seven, seven. So the same cost as Crater Hoof Behemoth, but it is a, a, a base 7-7 seven, seven instead of a base 5-5. Five, five. It also has Vigilance, which means it can get in there. That's cool. It also has Trample. Crater Hoof did not naturally have Trample. It gave itself Trample the turn it came into play. Mm -hmm. So a lot of a lot of buffs on, on Crater Hoof. One downside is that you're you're capped at giving plus two plus two, but you are giving vigilance, whereas Crater Hoof only gave oh, trample. Oh, that's interesting. Well, so trample's better, right? The Mike Arnold, thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. Almost two years in a row. What did you say? Trample's better. Well, Crater Hoof gave trample. I'm saying. Oh, this gives vigilance and trample. Correct. It gives I, I didn't, both. I didn't know. We didn't get there. I cut you you're off. You're giving it's vigilance in addition it's to in, in addition to trample. I so they're finish. both giving trample. This is just better. I'm going to let you finish. But Crater Hoof was one of the best cards green ramp creatures made. of all time. Um, best cube cards. So the thing is, like, this card is not Crater Hoof, but it, 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 it fills a lot of, like, it does a lot of things well. And I think it's I think it's good enough. Even if, like, you play this by itself as, like, a 7-7 seven, seven with haste and trample and vigilance and attack for 7, the turn comes into play, like, it's still not bad in a ramp deck. I don't know. I yeah, think, you I have to. Good. If you're playing ramp, you have to ramp into something better than this. Like what? Like a planeswalker. This wins you the game, man. No, it deals seven damage. Do you not like this card? No. You don't like it. It's a cool card, but it's not playable. It, it, it's maybe a pod target. Maybe. What are your eight drops? Or what are your seven drops that you're potting? I don't even think pod. I don't, you guys keep saying pod, and I don't actually think pod is a viable strategy in standard. I think it's viable. It's a 2-4. I'll just kill it. I don't care. It's dead. Well, this is just a 7-7. Seven, seven. It's dead. It is dead. The 2-4 is dead. You're dead. 
You're dead to me. <clears throat> yeah, I don't. I don't think this is playable. I don't think you're playable. I'm not playable. Okay, so no. You think no? Negative. I know it makes you sad. It just makes me wonder why we're friends. It's the it's the differences that bring us together. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. Enraged Ceratoc. That's one angry boy. Four 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 four. It can't be blocked by creatures of power two or less. It's a fine creature. I mean, just better four drops than standard. So. Yeah. Not standard card. Ga- Gatebreaker Ram. One unplayable pod target <laughs> buck. Wow, that's rude. That's rude. <laughs> Gate Breaker Ram, it's plus one, plus one for each gate you control. As long as you control two or more gates, it gets Vigil and Trample. So, if you have two gates, this is a 4-4 four, four for three. I mean, it's not bad. I think this card's good. Is it good? If there is a gate deck, this card is fine, right? Like, sure. three gates, and it's a 5-5 five, five for three with Trample and Vigilance. Okay, can we can we say something here? We can always say something. So, I want here. to interact with chat here. Super Fritz says, in a green ramp strategy, <laughs> I think it will see play. If you're referring to the 7-7... Seven, seven, Please tell me how. Because if you're ramping with cards that get you lands on the battlefield, when you're casting your 7-7, there's nothing for it to plus. That's not true. Like, you don't get you don't get to 8 mana with no creatures on board. You ramp on turn 2, you play a 5-drop. You ramp on turn 4, you ramp on turn 2, you play... Um, so on turn 3, you have 4 mana, you play a 4-drop. On turn 4, or 5, you play, like, a card that puts 2 lands into play. Like, like just... What? Oh, uh, like explosive, like an explosive vegetation type okay. card. Okay, so you have one Circuitous creature on the board. Route. So you have one creature on the board that what hasn't been interacted with yet. Like you, you can't. That's two fundamentally different archetypes that you're saying this card is good, but it's not good in decks that ramp because you're playing creatures that ramp you, right? Because you're tapping your creatures. But you don't like it's not like those are mutually exclusive. It. Like you don't only have one type of ramp deck where you ramp you you ramp and then you never play a creature up until No, the they're normally the one or the other. And if they come with creatures and circuitous route, then you're using then you're at that point you're trying to accelerate into your ramp because they have a 7 drop that so what if af- I go t- affects the battlefield immediately and is has staying power. Like, what if I go turn 2 Druid of the Cowl mm-hmm. into turn 3 circuitous route to put two lands from my deck into play? Okay. Now I have used my ramp creature to put more lands into play that I may use to no, cast. No, I'm saying my... you can do that, but then you don't cast a 7 seven that what makes lets you attack you just said oh i just paid seven mana to attack for 10 damage but then you still keep a seven seven on the board and i'm just that was an example i'm not saying that's your only creature on the board man like you're seeing it as like this is the end all be all of plays i don't think you can say that in a green ramp deck that card is great you can't do that because that card isn't built for a ramp deck like it that we look at crater hoof and we're jaded by Crater Hoof because we have other ways of adding our mana while still progressing our board, right? When we're casting, but don't we also have that in standard? Why don't no, we have no, that? you don't because in in Cra- okay, so in 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 um, really, yeah, like what though? How, how is I'm that trying not to true? Say, what's what's the name of the format? Uh, I was gonna say Pod, but Modern. <laughs> no, what, Cube. Cube. In, so in Cube, in Cube, we have access to mana rocks that cost us one mana and and gives us two, right? Or two mana and gives us three. At the same time, we're like. We're not tapping our creatures in order to cast this big thing. We have other ways to cheat Crater Hoof out. We have Eureka. We have other cards that... I don't understand why I can't just March of the Multitudes and then untap and then play this card. Oh, 100% you can, but how how did you get there? I play my mana every turn. I play land every turn. Yeah, but now you're talking about... So that's not a ramp strategy. That's just drawing to eight mana. But you can still ramp, though. If you ramp... Okay, I'll just play... Thunder Herd Migration into Circuitous Route into March of the Multitudes for seven into this guy. Like, I don't, like, you're thinking, like, if you don't play any creatures before turn seven, you're not going to have any turn cre- any creatures, but you can just literally take a turn off to put six one ones into play with March of the Multitudes. Do you remember the card Decimator of Provinces? Yep. Wasn't played. Correct. Ha- it was almost the literal identical card, almost. It gave plus two, plus two to all your creatures. It gave them an effect. I don't think it was Vigilance. <clears throat> Decimator Provinces was different because it cost triple green, which is big. Was this guy, is this guy cost triple green? Yes. Yeah. Really? Five five and triple green. It's also nine to emerge. Yeah, but it's a merge. What does that mean? Like, you, it means you have to literally give up a creature. But there were creatures that you could sacrifice that gave you other creatures when you sacrificed them in in, in that in that block. So, like, that, there was relevant, that there was relevance to the emerge. There were creatures that you sacrificed to pay emerge and you got three twos out of it. 
Like that, that's to me, like if you're building a deck for that card, then that's already built into the deck, right? You're not losing a creature, you're gaining a 3-2. Yes, but that creature can attack that turn. Right? Like, if you sacrifice your 1-1 that puts a 3-2 into play when it dies, like, you're not attacking with it when you with well, this the, Well, no, so to be fair, all, uh, in, uh, that was just a, a thrown-out example. But in that example, those creatures had haste. The point... Well, the 3-2s did. The 3-2 Eldrazi that you got had haste. No, it didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. Definitely did not. What's the, what was that card? I can't, no, it wasn't a card. There was a 4-drop. There was a 4-drop. Yeah, it was like Man Maniac or something. Oh, and, yeah. Enlightened Maniac. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put a three-two colorless Eldrazi horror with onto the battlefield. Haste. Yeah, none of them have haste. Like that wasn't just a, that wasn't a quality of those cards. What's a gatebreaker ram? What the hell is that? The thing you're staring at. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna go back to this guy then. Like, so here's the thing: unless you two for one yourself with the, with decimator of the provinces, you don't get to attack with it for seven. Whereas, like, Enray's Forerunners, you can just literally cast and attack for seven. Like, I just, I, I feel like it's a different. Wait, what, say, say that again? Like, if I if I'm ever want to just play this creature and attack with it, either cost not, me 10 not, mana. Not, playing, not paying it for its emerge cost is what you're saying. Or, no, 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 even if you play it for its emerge cost, but you're not trying to take advantage of the plus two, plus two, right? Mm -hmm. You're just trying to play Decimate of the Provinces. You're emerging it, sure, but you're not trying to really take advantage of the, 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 the wideness the wide, of it. Yeah, yeah. It's still going to two-for-one yourself. And then you attack for the 7-7, seven, seven, right? But this guy I can just cast, and it's still 7-7. Seven, seven. Like, I, I mean, it just it feels like a better card. It also has it, it has Vigilance, which is relevant. How are you cheating this into play? That That's what I was trying to get to. But I don't know how else you're cheating this into play other than the pot, the pot ability. Crater Hoof was different. Crater Hoof you could bring back from the graveyard. Like, Crater Hoof could be reanimated. That That's completely different. Well, so could this guy. So could this guy. With I mean, like, with what card, though? What what are we playing that can bring that back? Well, what were card. you playing that could bring Crater Hoof back? It was the basis of a deck. Didn't they have uh, the the one that had flashback on it? On Burial Rites? Yeah, wasn't that in the, wasn't that the format? I don't remember Crater Hoof getting reanimated with Burial Rites, but I, mean, I could be wrong. There's also like great state there's also great standard decks that make tons of tokens right now. I, I, I don't know. What seven are we potting? I mean, who are we, like, who's? I don't even see anyone playing that that two four. I really don't. But which two four? Oh, the Vanifer? Yeah, mm. I just don't see it. I mean, maybe that's me. We'll see. It, the, the only way that card can actually see play is if it's in a defined meta. Like you have to have your bullets that that affect the meta. Give me my bullets. Palaka worm pods into this. Yes, very well too. Why don't I gain seven life? Draw a card. No, it's not on Barrier Roads, Crystal Brian. Right, that's my point. I don't think there was a. I don't think there was an umbrella rights because like this is this crater hoof is just worse than every other card that you can umbrella rights. Because like when are you when are you enhancing your board, dude? If you're gonna no, because I could have sworn that deck was when you had Angel Serenity. Why would you play crater hoof though? Because you had you had access to the uh, was it lingering souls? You had access to ways to make tokens. Really, I don't remember yes. this at all. Yes, this was the same format with Prime Speaker Zagana. The card Prime Speaker Zagana. I like how when you did that with your eyes, your camera auto-focused and then refocused. It was weird. Can we move on? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to address that because, like, to, in, in my opinion, I don't think... You, you can't just say, oh, in a ramp deck, this card is great. It, it's, it's not that simple. Did I say that? No, no, no. I'm, I'm telling you why I wanted to have a chat about it okay. because I read that in chat and I wanted to give my, my opinion on that. But I think it's... I, yeah, but I also think it's disingenuous to be like, you're either... If you're a ramp deck, you're ramping every single turn... And the first creature you play is on eight. I don't think that's how that works. I think you can do both. You can play a ramp spell, then play a creature, then play a ramp spell, then play a creature, then play a creature. Like, you don't have to do one or the other. It's not like you're making it seem like, in your ramp deck, how will you ever play a creature before turn eight? And it's just not how that works. My Especially when you have, like, Rejuvenator Elf, which literally puts a land I'll into give play you that one. That one is a that, one. That's perfect. That is everything you want to get to that card. Give me two of those, and we'll call it... We'll. we'll well, like, let's play with the uh, Ranging Raptor then, who gets uh, gets a he, land out of your deck whenever when it's dealt damage. Whenever he gets poked. So, Gatebreaker Ram. This card seems fine. I if, think if, if there's a ramp, a deck, if there's yeah. a gate deck, this card seems cool. I'm not going to put it on because it's very niche, but no. it's, a good, it's a good rate. Gift of Strength. Look at this Theros art. 
Oh, mana really does look like they're Target actually. creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains reach until end of turn. That's fine. It's a combat trick. Mm-hmm. It, the reach is the cute addition to it. Growth Chamber Guardian. This card's interesting. I had this card played against me yesterday, and it is literally just as good as I thought it would be. I mean, they didn't have another one. Oh, you're playing in Constructed, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, and I was playing Mono Blue. So, well, Blue Red. But um, this this card, like on five mana, is just dumb. Worth noting that this is more alliteration. Growth Chamber Guardian. <laughs> This this card is very very good. All right, so it is a two two for two, which is fine. Okay, we cool. We got a we got a reasonable rate here. Uh, whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on Growth Chamber Guardian, you may search your library for a card named Growth Chamber Guardian or reveal it, put it in your hand. So whenever you adapt to this guy, you get to find more of them. Or if you have other ways to put counters on him, well, you could just adapt him. He's got his own. Yeah. Oh, you mean like if you do it after the fact, you're like, oh, I'll adapt him and then I'll put a one one counter on him with this ability and then I'll get another one. No, I meant like you don't even have to. Like, if you cast him with off of Domri, he automatically searches for another one. That's interesting. If you atta- cast him off a three-mana enchantment, the Riot enchantment, he he searches for another one automatically. This card is great. The, the, cool, the, the cool thing that makes me like this card so much, I probably won't play it, first of all. Elf it's not crab. my style. <laughs> it's not really my style. <laughs> it's not my style of deck. But the cool thing about this card is you can put <laughs> four of him in your, in your deck, and he... And, him by he's like a miniature synergy within whatever else you're trying to do like this card needs to be answered control has to do something about it or else it just gets out of hand like this card is very very good i think it's good it's cards it's great. on my list yeah cards great cards great it's a standard staple gruel Beastmaster. four mana for a two two you have already lost me riot it could be a three three four mana three three when it attacks another target creature you control, gets plus X plus O, where X is its power. Okay, time out. This card actually, now that you read the whole card, this card's actually pretty good in, in limited. Yeah, no shit. No one's not going to play this oh, in limited. God. Like, it's a, yeah, it's Poop. great. It's a 3-3 three, three in limited that pumps any other dude. Yeah, all right, all right, great. I didn't, and it does it the turn it comes out. That's what's great. I faced this twice yesterday. It was busted both times in limited. Four mana for an enchantment guardian project. When a non-token creature enters the battlefield oh under God, your control, limited, yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature in your graveyard, so it's basically a better draw a card. Master. It's literally you draw a card after every, every card you play. <laughs> That's awesome. It was miserable, and I did not win. That's awesome. You could also use it to shuffle your deck if you don't have any more of them. Kerwit, that's a good point, buddy. The uh, the old uh, guardian, guardian, oh the yeah. growth chamber guardian Sh- shuffle. Fine. It's like Squadron Hawk, but for Simic weirdos. <laughs> Incubation Druid. This card is gr- good, but four mana is a little too steep for no. constructed, and it's really hard to build no, around. No, but, so. but that's a card that people, some people said might, might see playing Commander. Oh, yeah, 100%. I can see that. Oh, definitely, because it's one of. They're all yeah. one of. Mm-hmm. Incubation Druid. Two mana. Add one mana of any type that a land you control could produce. If Incubation has a 1-1 counter on it, add three mana of that type instead. Um, wait, what's you okay? I was laughing at chat while you are reading, because I know the card. I'm just laughing because they're saying I, I like the Growth Chamber Guardian because it has swole arms. Does it, though? They look kind of scrawny. Yeah, the hands are Your hands swole. are swole. You got some swole hands. And you can adapt this for five. What do you think of this? Like, it's a two-mana ramp spell. It's, it's, a, it's a two-mana O2 that ramps you one. And it could ramp you three. So I watched this played by BBD yesterday a lot, and it didn't seem that great. It didn't seem that great to me. I mean, would I rather have, have this to... over the the O2 that adds one, and then if you for a kick spell, it adds two? So in order to make this card busted, you have to jump through a hoop. You have to play another card to give it the plus one, plus one counter. But if your deck's already playing the Fires of Yavamaya card, then sure, this seems great. ETB, well, I guess it wouldn't have haste, though, so it's not even that great. It just has tap to add, tap to add a Black Lotus, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, but I don't, it's a lot of work. Like yeah. it's a lot of hoops to jump through. Yeah, I don't think it's that great. Mammoth Spider three five or with a reach for five. I hate spiders. Manus. I hate spiders in real life IRL. Oh, you're getting real aggressive about this. I'm serious. I hate spiders. I had a spider. I had a spider encounter you can move today. All, all of it. All of it moves. I know. I just don't want to force it. You, please force it because I'd rather have good content and have you actually talking into the mic. Sorry. Than not talking into the mic. Yeah, you have to pay for this. What? You have to pay for it. What do I have to pay for? Didn't you just pay up front and now we're trying to recoup the expenses? I'm trying to give you good content. Let's go. Can I just say that I don't like spiders? You did. Okay. You said it. Open the gates. One mana. Search letter for basic land or a gate card. Real. Put it in your hand. What do you think of this card? It's it's great for fixing and limited. 
Oh, uh, it's good in the gate deck. <laughs> if there is a gate deck, I won't write it down. I won't write it down. But if there's a gate deck. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, here. you got it. You got it. You got it. Rampage of the Clans. Four mana for an instant. Destroy all artifacts and enchantments for each permanent destroyed. This way its controller creates a 3-3 green centaur creature token. Such a weird card design. You know what I wonder? If like you can play all the one and two mana enchantments in your deck and artifacts. Mm -hmm. And then end of your opponent's turn, you play Blast Rampage them. of the Clans and then, just, and then just overwhelm them. You would wonder that, wouldn't you? What? How do they stop that? If they don't have a counter spell. Oh, okay. I was going to say counter spell. How do you stop like Settle the wreckage. seven... Nexus of Fate. What does Nexus of Fate do? Just don't ever let you take another turn to oh, attack. Oh, okay. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Rob, push the mic away when you drop a bomb. That was sweet. What happened? What happened? I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going on anyway. Anyway. Push the mic away when you drop a bomb. I don't know. Are you still talking about content or Rob's drugs? You paid for it up front and now we're just <laughs> recouping the cost. <laughs> we're just trying to recoup the cost. At a 10% increase. What is, uh, that's just called the juice though in your business, right? Is it? They put the juice on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the, uh, do, no, no? No. on this? Rampaging, wow. So, look, a more alliteration, guys. Rampaging Renhorn. Five mana for a 4-4 four, four with Riot. Great limited. Next. Right? Yep. Regenesis. That's a sweet, sweet name. Five mana. Return up to two target permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. It's a crap, crap card. For five mana, like, come on. We've been seeing this card a ton of times. Like, there was a uh, restock. Vivid Revival. Yeah, there's a bunch of cards that do similar things to this. My favorite was the green one that cost like six mana. What was it called? Seasons? Seasons Pass? Oh, that card was gas. That card was great. Yeah, thanks for Sam Black for busting that card. That card was great. Uh, someone made a good point. They said that the, uh, Treasures, using that Destroy All Artifacts with mm. Treasures is pretty interesting. I just like to make mana Give me them tree now. trees. Uh, Root Snare. Uh, we have this. Burn all combat damage that we dealt this turn for two mana. We all know what this That's does. It's already in standard. Sagittar's Volley. Three mana. Destroy a target creature with flying, which is great. But it also deals one damage to each creature with flying your opponent's control, which is also super sweet. So if afterlife is a real thing? Yeah. Then you get to... Like, three mana to just kill any creature with flying is pretty nice. It's just a plummet that costs one more. I don't think this is going to see play over Crushing Canopy right now because Dirk String and Enchantment is super useful. But it's nice to have. It's always nice to have these little tricks. Ceruli Caretaker. Like one mana card. for an O3. Defender. Tap an untapped creature you control. Add one mana of any color. Really? So you tap two creatures to add a mana? I only like it because it reminds me of Loam Dryad. You remember Loam Dryad from the from the days where we had that land that flipped into a, like a 9-9 a nine -nine indestructible or hexproof or whatever? Was it Loam? What was... Loam Shaman. Is it Loam, Loam Dryad? I think it was Loam Dryad. I thought Loam Dryad was a 2-1 that, that had a non-basic land walk. Loam Dryad is a 1-1-2. One, one, oh, yeah, okay. So it's basically a Loam Dryad except it's a 0-3 instead of a 1-2. Yeah. Huh. So wait, why do we like this though? I just think that that effect is cool. The fact that it, obviously, uh, Llanowar Elves is great because Llanowar Elves allows you to add, you know, it's one mana. But this one, this one, you can add any color. So that's why I kind of like. You're it. any color. So like, if you're trying to ramp to four for your for your uh, the the dude that drains one life and gains you one life, this is the drains card I was talking gains. about. Let me tell you something, man. I hold the seed of our new beginning. <laughs> I was like, what? what are you talking about, you weirdo? You know. At least tell me when we're not you know. streaming. I'm going to pass. I don't think this... I, I. Wow, that is some crazy, crazy flavor text when you read it again. I hold the seed of our newbie... Jesus. Well, she's holding an actual acorn. Yeah, but come on. That was... You know. That's pretty directly you indirect. Know. Or indirectly S direct. Styrofoam hybrid. <laughs> it's a Michelin man. <laughs> so sorry. No, it's okay. You were topping out there. Wow. You were clipping there, my dude. Yeah, that dude's that looks like a human in a merfolk suit. This is a styrofoam hybrid. Yeah. Two mana for a two two and adapt four, so it becomes a six six. Awesome limited sure, card. Sure, I'll play it all the time. Yep. Are like adapt is just a different isn't adapt just what's the other ability that like you could use it in the later game? Like isn't adapt just like another ability? Are you talking about the one on Pelucranos? Monstrous? Yeah, it's kinda like monstrous. Mm-hmm. Silhana Wayfinder. Two mana for a 2-1. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land. Put it on top of your library. Put the, I, can't, I hate it when they put a cards on I, top. I do hate that. But, okay, that's bad enough. Why didn't you just let us put it in the graveyard? Well, like, like if you're, you're already handicapping us. Well, the thing is, like, a lot of times putting it in the graveyard isn't necessarily a good thing. Like, it's not always a good thing. But when is putting on the bottom a good thing? Well, it's not. But it's like a default thing. But it's not like a net negative. Right. Well, but, but that's my point. Is... 
I, I, your, your argument for not doing it one way is because you don't always want to do that, but there is never a reason to put them on the bottom of your library. Well, See what I'm is. saying? Well, because graveyard is inherently a good thing. Like not inherently, but like it's easier to exploit the graveyard than it is to exploit the library, the library. Right. So like, if you're not, if you're not just putting them in the, like if there's no reason, if there's no thematic reason to put it in the graveyard, then it's just better to err on the side of putting it on the bottom of the library. All right. Like, Anyway, the card's not great. <laughs> like, it's weird that this is an uncommon because, like... Yeah, like, that's... Like, Somala Woodshaper is just... I mean, that's just what it is. Just, Steeple Creeper. Seems pretty unlimited. 4-2 for 3. Yeah, it's a 4-2 flyer. Like, I mean, like, you... There's limited formats that have 4-2s for 3 that are just normal. But this Frog Snake uh, <laughs> gains flying until the end of turn, Ooh, like boy. you do. So... Steeple Creeper. Yeah, this seems fine for limited. Stony Strength, of course, we're just just going to keep alliterating through the entire set. This is how we turn on our, our... Have we discussed a large hole on the underside of Swole Mike's left arm? I don't think so. Is there a hole in your arm? I don't see any hole. I don't see a hole. What's going on here? I have no idea. Oh, my tree. It's my tree. The green. Oh, wow. That's insane. Oh, can I put my finger behind? No, because... <laughs> <laughs> your your fundamental misunderstanding of how the green screen works is pretty comical. <laughs> That's cool. Put it in front of the the the, the green or the 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 pink rather, so it looks different. No, the pink. There you go. Look at that. That's weird, man. That's not how flesh can put my finger behind. <laughs> All right, Sunny Strength one man. Put a one one counter on target creature you control. Untap that creature. This is nice for your gross Genesis chamber. This is and gross also how you turn guardian. on your um the dude that adds Black Lotus mana. Is that if it has any counter on it? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, those those it's the same for Growth Chamber Guardian. Interesting. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sylvan Brush Strider, three mana for a three two when it enters battlefield gain two life. Oh he looked like he stumbled a bit when he first Aww. was born. Oh he looks like he's still stumbling a bit yeah. even now. Look at that back that rear kneecap. Mm. Super high kneecap there. What's wrong with his leg? Nothing. Stop judging him. Territorial boar. Two mana for a two two. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield. What's this I don't understand this four power theme that's with this set, because it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Territorial Boar gains Territorial Boar gains plus one plus one and vigilance until end of oh, turn. Oh, Borat? That's nice. Borat. Titanic Brawl. Two mana. Just cost one less if you target a creature you control with the plus one plus one counter. So it's very similar to Savage Stomp. Oh, yeah. And target creature you control fights target creature you don't control as usual. Card's fine. Good, yeah. You doing okay? Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Tower Defense goes well with the... Uh, yes, this just wins the game. Yeah, it basically does. Literally just wins the game. Alexa, can Rob put his finger through his arm? Hmm, I'm not sure. She not sure. Creatures you control get plus 0, plus 5. If you're playing something like Arcades Sabbath, or Arcades the Strategist, rather, or um, the new card in this set that lets your creatures deal damage equal to their toughness, this is extremely strong combat trick. It's like, it's like basically giving you guys plus 5, plus 5. Why has there never been a cynic creature that's a boar rat? Oh my god, that would be amazing. A boar. And the flavor <laughs> text could be the flavor text could be this it is nice. Just, it should say I like. <laughs> Very nice. You should tell Ollie that. He'll probably get a laugh. He'll probably get a laugh out of that because Simics is guild. Troll bread guardian. Five mana for a five five. This card is pretty ridiculous and limited because it's like it's five mana for a five five, which is great stats already, but then the adapt is only three. So yeah. for an extra three mana you get a seven seven. And it gives your other creatures trample. It's, and it, it gives itself trample as well. It's pretty strong. But again, it's not a card we're going to be sleeping up for our FNMs. Unless you're playing limited for FNM. Wilderness Reclamation. At the beginning of your end step, untap all lands you control. What do you think about this card? This card's bonkers. Is it really? It is. I've watched it do bonkers stuff. And you're saying constructed, right? Yes. Can you imagine what this does when you have multiples? Mm, no. They each trigger individually. Okay, so what are you doing with your mana, though? Expansion Explosion. Nexus of Fate. Like, we know what this card was printed for. What was it printed for? Expansion Explosion. Nexus of Fate. That's what it was printed for? I don't think that's true. But, yep. I mean, like, all right. I'm going to put it on the list, man, because I trust you. I don't trust you. Turbo Fog is 100% going to be a deck. 100%. 
Which is sad. Turbo Folk is already kind of a deck. I lost to it at the to Twitch Rivals event. That's sad. Wrecking Beast. It's your boy. It looks like a chicken. This card is busted. It looks like a, uh, a rooster. You look like a rooster. Cuckoo! I'm sorry, what? Cuckoo! <laughs> Do you think that's how roosters sound? Whatever, man. <laughs> I'm not a... Or am I like a aviologist? Avi... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is that a thing? I was going to say avianar avian avianarian. Avianarian. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm playable and constructed. Yep. See you later, buddy. And that's the end of the green. Now we get to go to Yeah, the I saw so like green think, has two. Yeah, we saw <laughs> I saw green has two. I wrote four. Biogenic ooze, he doesn't like it. End race forerunners, he doesn't like it. Growth chambered guardian, he likes it. And wilderness reclamation, he likes it. Those are the those are the four cards um, that that we saw that could put possibly see play. Not a lot in green. How do you feel about absorb? As we're tackling the Azorius, it's it depends on them. It depends on the meta. Is this better or worse than sinister sabotage? I think it's worse. I think it's worse unless it's like a mono red meta. Unless it's like super aggressive yeah. meta, yeah. I still think it's worth it's it's a playable card. Like this, the card yeah. itself is a playable card. I mean, so you don't even list. look at this card in the context of its mana cost because you know those are going to be your because of Tefri. You're already playing those colors if you're playing counter Correct. spells. It's not so it's the not color has nothing to do with it. It's it's either you want to gain through life or you want to scry. And sometimes you want to do both. Yeah, and but then you can't. can't. There's no card that mm -hmm. lets you do that. Nope. Azorius Knight Arbiter busted. It's it's not in limited. It's not. Oh. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's uh, fine and limited. It's not busted and limited. A 2-5 that can't be blocked and it's vigilant? For five mana? You're going to tell me that's not... What about Pterodon Knight? I don't know what that is. Ter the the flying chicken? Pterodon Knight? The chicken? Seriously? From Rivals? The like the defining card of Rivals Limited? It was a 2-5 uh, dinosaur? 2-5 flyer. It was a different format, though. Those are two different formats. This card can't be blocked. It's better. It just doesn't fly. I'm going to move on now. He's vigilant. Azorius Skyguard. Six mana. You lost me. Wow. For a 3-3 flying first striker. That's weak. Creatures your opponents control get negative one, negative zero. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Not if you don't play it. A Deputy of Detention. I love this card. Literal. It's literally Fiend Hunter. It's the... It's the if you had the uh, the mathematical the ratio equation from from high school, it would be Fiend Hunter is to Journey to Nowhere as Deputy of Detention is to Detention Sphere. It's the same card. It's literally a Detention Sphere on a one three. I like that. But that being the case, still very very good. Like being it, able to exile any permanent with a one three is. Is it really uh, is it worded the same way that it the where you can't abuse it? How can you not abuse it? Because like you remember the old uh, the old effects like if you tight hollow scholar and then you. The card yeah, gets all, exiled forever. Yes, all cards are worded the new way, the, okay. so that so, because that, that was just a confusing, miserable loophole that that, that existed. Hmm. Dovin Mega Grand Mind. Arbiter. It's Mega Mind. It's what? It's Mega Mind. What's Mega Mind from? Me uh, from it's from Mega Mind. I don't know what that is. Just Google Mega Mind. No, I'm not doing that. You Google Mega Mind. I'm not gonna seriously. Do I'll let someone else Google it. It's Will Ferrell. They don't need to Google it. They know who Mega Mind is. Just Google it. Oh, from um. From the movie Mega Mine. I'm done. Why do you know all these bad movies? Because I have kids and it's a cartoon. Dovin Grand Arbiter, three mana for a three loyalty planeswalker, plus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a loyalty counter on Dovin. So if you have like three three Thopters or something, you put Dovin up to four. You attack with the Thopters, and then he goes up to seven. Pretty strong. Negative one. Create a one one colorless Thopter artifact creature with flying. You gain a life. So it's a reverse Bitter Blossom there. <laughs> negative seven look at the top seven negative seven look at the top ten cards of your library put three of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order so it's basically it's kind of like a dig through time it's a better dig through time well right because it's ten cards instead of and, and, and it's, it's three, three cards right so you've added a card and three cards to each end so this card's great it's a good three minute planes order I don't think it's great in like eternal formats but I think it's a great card hmm <clears throat> It will see play. What about modern? No. Okay. What about limited? Yeah. Yeah, all right. It's fine. I think it's fine. It's a planeswalker. Like it definitely requires some build around. Like you want to have creatures that can plus him. You want to have synergies with the doctors you're making. I think it's fine. 
Hey, maybe. I think it, I think it, I like its synergy with the new Tezzeret. I bought my Tezzeret. I was just to say I bought my Tezzeret for two bucks about a week ago. Two dollars? They were down to like two fifty. Yeah. Mother of God. Dovin's Acuity. This is a reverse disinformation campaign, basically. Three mana, one white and blue. It, when it enters the battlefield, you gain two life and draw a card. Uh, whereas disinformation campaign was what? They just discard a card. You No, was, they discard, you draw. You draw, right. So instead of discarding, mm -hmm. uh, you're gaining two life. So far, it's worse. Whenever you cast an instant spell during your main phase, you may return Dovin's Acuity oh. to its owner's hand. This is hard because I never want to do that. Yeah, no, this is not playable. Like, I don't think this card is good. Mm-mm. It's like making you. It's making you do the worst parts of. It's making your. De it's making you play worse. It's making right, your it's, play pattern. It's worse. encouraging you to do to, to to make worse decisions simply to take advantage of of the ability, and I don't like that. And I don't like how it makes me feel. I don't like how it makes you feel either. Emergency powers seven mana. We ha we what's that? What's isn't there a quote from Star Wars with this with this title? No. Emergency powers. Anyway, someone I don't watch get Star it. Wars. I don't watch Star Wars. So it's funny when people say things like that because it's not like you have to watch it regularly, right? I've never seen Star Wars. There you go. See, that's better. That's better wording. Each player shovels their hand and graveyard into the library, then draws seven cards, exile it. Okay, so we basically have seven mana time twister, right? Uh, if you control, if you cast this spell during your main phase, you may put a permanent card with converted mana cost seven or less from your hand on the battlefield. It's a cool effect. I don't... It's all right. I mean, giving your opponent, you still give your opponent seven cards and you still give them first crack at the mana. Like, you get to put something with seven or less into play, but a lot of times you're not going to have a you, seven you mana card. You don't give them crack at the mana. Oh, if you, if if you, you do it at the end of the turn, yeah. sure. But I don't like this effect because this is going to be played in a deck that you're probably behind on the board, anyways. If you're ahead on the board, like, you're not affecting the board at all. Well, you get to draw your Wrath of God, I guess, or like your whatever. I don't know, man. Too many things can go wrong with this card. Like, it just doesn't... I never want to give my card... Like, when you're playing a control deck, typically you have six to seven cards anyway, and you they have one or two cards, six, right? Cards. Like, you're trying to attrition them out with cards, right? Like, they'll play out their whole hand, and uh, you, you're you like, no, I, I got still got a full grip because I play cards that draw, let me draw three. So, I can't imagine the situation where you're like, yes, I'm really coming out ahead from this draw seven, and they are, they are not. Unless you have Leovold in your deck as well. And you're not playing standard. Mm. Oh. But this, huh? this is a no from us. All right? this, is a, no. this is a yikes. Yeah. High alert. Three mana. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Creatures you control can attack as though they didn't have a defender. And you get to untap target creature. This That's is just the enhancement of the Arcades deck. It gives it yeah, more it's stability. Just another, it's another. So now you have eight ways to do that instead of just It's going to be a real deck. Or four, rather. It's going to be a real deck, and not because of this or the Arcades, but because of the Tetsuko. But I don't think... Does it go on the list? Yeah, I think it, it will be a deck in standard. I don't think the card is good, but it will be a deck in standard. Alright, I'm going to put it on the list. <clears throat> Butts.deck. Lavinia Azorius Renegade. I think this card's probably pretty good. 2-2 two, two for 2. Meddling Mage mana. Each opponent can't cast non-creature spells with converted mana cost greater than the number of lands that player controls. So if they have three lands, they can't cast non-creature spells. They can't abuse mana rocks. Can't abuse Simeon Spirit Guides. Right. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. That's pretty nuts. Yes. I think this card's great. I think it'll see play in, in, in Eternal formats, not in Standard. And Modern. Correct, yeah, Modern. <clears throat> Yeah, also, like, just being... The fact that these are, like, two, two, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2 is very good. Like, I mean, a lot of times you see cards like this, but, like, their stats are under... Like, it's a 1-1 one, one for 2, and you're like, well, that sucks, but... <laughs> I mean, yeah, being a 2-2 two, two for 2, making sure it's it's still on par for the, for its stats is, is very important. So. It literally just shuts off Force of Will. Like... Just shuts off Force Will. Well, it counters it. They still have to exile their card. Oh, this card is mean to Tron. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Oh, we got three lands? Does that card cost seven? Oh, no, I can't think so. That's a no from me. That's a no from me, dog. Law Mage is mining three mana, flash, enchant creature, enchant creature can Here's attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. That card's great. This card actually is very good. I don't think it'll be played in, in construction. You don't think so? Nope. For three mana? Like, it's because like, it's of flash? You're not even flash? Mm -mm. Why would you play seal away but not this? Because it costs two. Also, there's a reason to having cards off the board versus not having them on the board. Come, see, 
I don't know, man. This card seems good. It's three. Three mana is too much. Why do you hate her? Hate her? Why do you hate her? There's Why a do you hate Harley Quinn, who's getting captured here snakes. by by Gotham, by the Gotham PD? With their shiny lights. Can you skip that? All right, cool. <laughs> Senate Guild Mage. Two mana for a 2-2. Two -two. One in a tap, you gain two life. One blue in a tap, you, you loot. I actually think this is fine. It's okay. I'm not going to play any constructive. No. Know. Like, honestly, in, in this is this seems like the Golgari Guild Mage of the set. Or not the Golgari, the Conclave. The, is it one? Yeah, the blue, the blue or red one. No, Conclave is Conclave the is white, green white. Green white. Why so? How do you mean? I didn't think that one was any good. You didn't think the Conclave Guild was any good? Yeah, it was the one that made a two-two for what five or six mana. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that good. Unlimited. The card's utterly insane. Mm -hmm. Well, you've you played a lot of Ravnica Limited, so I understand where your opinion comes from. Actually, I I have. I'm gold ranked in limited. Wow, you're gold ranked on arena. I just started yesterday. Get out of here. I just started yesterday. Sphinx of the New Prov, <coughs> two white, two blue, four three, flying vigilance. Spells your opponent's cast that targets Sphinx of New Prov costs two more to cast. Who cares about like that's just? They know the black one is three three with death touch and life and no, I think and, the black and hex proof right. Black white one. The black blue one. Oh yes, yeah. It's like that guy has hex proof, which is just miles better than. Oh, you got to pay two more to kill it. It's just like Icefall Regent. Right. Yeah. Or, or no. Except Ferox. it doesn't tap anything down. Right. This it, card's it just flies. Whatever. I mean, I'll play it in limited if I get these colors. It's terrible art. It is weird art. It's just weird. Sphinx's Insight. Okay. What? Sphinx's Insight. Okay. Four mana. Draw two cards. If you cast this during your main phase, you gain two life. What do you think of this card? The other one's better. The, the the mono blue one we I, like have. The, I like the mono blue one as well yeah I never want to play this during my turn like if you're going to get me to, to <clears> tap <throat> out during my turn to play this you should give me four life I'm not crazy two two life is not a lot yeah it should be four you're right it should be four life two is nothing especially when you're tacking on two life on a four drop I did some work with the conclave guild mage uh, you and me both buddy you and me both two whole life it's basically nothing senate to griffin you think this dude's on the senate no, he's not. Get the hell out of here, man. I'm sorry. I would I'd vote for you, but he I don't think He carries the way. Senate. Uh 3 2 for 4. When it enters the battlefield, scry 1. Good and limited. Great. Next. <laughs> Next. Depose deploy. So for 2 mana, we can tap a creature, draw a card. Not terrible. Verity circle. You can oh, draw two draw, cards. Draw two cards. Mm. Deploy. 4 mana. Create 2 1 1 color stopped or artifact creature tokens of flying. Then you gain 1 life for each creature you control. That's actually not bad. It's okay because it's an instant. It's going to gain you at least 2. And if you're going wide with like a Dovin Bond strategy, Dovin Bond Tezzeret deck, um, it's actually, I kind of like it a lot. Yeah. Like if you can, if you go turn 3 Dovin, make a guy. Turn 4 deploy, make 2 guys gain at least 3. That's his neg, right? His neg is making His neg is right. Yeah. So you're gaining 1 from that. You're gaining 3 from this. You're up 4 life. And then in turn 5, you go Tezzeret, draw 2 cards. Seems good. It's not bad. If your opponent did nothing. Wow, that's rude. Like shock your Dovin bomb. Anyway, the point is to put cards that we think are fascinating. <clears throat> yes. No, I, I definitely think this goes on the list. I think it's I think it's got versatility. Deploy the child. I think <laughs> it's a solid meme there. This card's great. Warrant for two white puts target attacking or blocking creature on top of its owner's library, so it's a Zorius charm. Warden, five mana, choose a critic four four white Sarah and blue sphinx token with flying angels. Yeah, this card's great. This card's great. I wish it was a. Uh, I wish it was both sides instant, but yeah, maybe that's too good. Maybe that's too good. All right, so for the playable Azorius cards, we have Absorb, Deputy, Deputy of Detention, Dovin Grand Arbiter, High Alert, Lavinia, Azorius Renegade, Depose, Deploy, and Warrant Warden. So not a bad. There's 16 total, and there's one, two, three, four, five, seven. So about half are are potentially playable. So. Now we get to the gruel section, ladies and gentlemen. There's probably be like 30 playables here. Well, there's only 16, so if there is, we've done something wrong. Okay. Uh, Bullrack, Clan Crusher. Five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Remove a 1-1 one, one counter from a creature you control. It deals two damage to any target. He looks like he was just trying to get lunch at work, and then he found out that the soup he wanted was out. <laughs> I just <laughs> wanted broccoli cheese! <laughs> <laughs> they never have broccoli cheese! 
just destroys a pillar, a decoration inside the restaurant <laughs> with his with his shoe. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bullrack. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We just ran out of this thing that just happened. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Mr. Bullrack. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bullrack, sir. Uh, I'll take French onion then. Oh, we're actually out of French onion as well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway that being said not playable <laughs> cinder vines i only remember what it does i don't it doesn't matter <laughs> you remove a counter it deals two damage to something boop and you have to tap him to do it i'm like this is a four four i don't want to tap my four four to deal two damage to something how's the laser recovering going not too bad not too bad i have to keep uh i have to keep my eyes my eyes hydrated two mana for when for an enchantment Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, it deals one damage to them. Okay, we're, we're working on something here. Sacrifice it to destroy an artifact or enchantment deals two damage. So it's it, it's just literally strict. I want to say strictly better, but you can. It is strictly better. It's not. It, yes, it is. What are you What are you talking about? I'm talking about modern burn. What is it strictly better than the card that costs the same that they use? They have four of them in their sideboard. Destructive revelry. Yes, it doesn't cost the same. It costs three. Revelry costs three. No, oh, this, this costs does. three. Yeah, this is better. It's a better card, but it's not strictly better because okay. that's not how strictly better works. It means in every situation this will be sure. better. This has a, an upside. If you never draw third land, this is not, this is, this not this card will will replace that card in modern. Uh, I can definitely see that. Yeah. yeah, this card's really good, and it's cool because it's kind of just hidden in the set. It won't be played in standard. Like it's just there, you know. I do know. Okay. I get you. I get you. Clan guild mage a two two for dose. Target creature can't block this turn is the red ability. Target this, land you... This one's good. Target land you control becomes a 4 full elemental with haste and thunder. Really? Yes. This one I like less. That's funny. Really? Yeah, because like making your land a 4-4 four, four until the end of the turn... I think the blocking one is the is the relevant because generally when you're... Well, again, I have no experience in Are limited. you talking about limited? Yeah. These are all playable and limited though. Oh. Well, I know. I, I didn't say this is playable. I said this one's better. I didn't say it was playable. Well, Slow down. No, no, no. I, that wasn't my, I'm, what I'm trying to say. Is my I wasn't trying to say. Oh, this is playable and limited. My point was this one's better. This one's really good to me in limited. You agree? Yeah, I think this card's great in limited. I play this in limited every day. Right, next. I wish the target land you control became a four four. It didn't cost three because it's expensive, but yeah. whatever. It's fine. It's still good. Domery Chaos Bringer. I don't know how I feel about this guy. I think it's in the middle. I think it's it okay. is in the middle. Two. It's a four mana planeswalker with five loyalty, plus one. Add a green or a red. If that mana is spent on a creature, it gains riot, which is good. I think the that's fact fine. that you can use it on any spell is nice, which is cool. Correct. You don't have to use it on a creature. Yep. So that's nice. Um, negative three. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reel up to two creature cards from among them and put them into your hand. Okay. So look at the top four. And you can grab. I mean, two you're probably. Let's be real. You're probably going to hit one creature most of the time. Yeah. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Negative three is a lot to draw, to technically, like, to kind of draw one here. I guess you could go Domery on four and then Carnage Tyrant on five. That's a good point. I mean, that's not bad, especially with Carnage Tyrant getting Riot. Mm -hmm. That's kind of scary. Seven, my, six, problem with, my problem with Domery is that he's very reliant on the other things you already have in your hand. Yep. And also, like, the way I, the way I see this card is he's kind of, when I said in the middle, he's kind of is you're taking a turn off right he's not doing anything to enhance point. what you're doing when you could just be doing that better anyways like what your deck is trying to do that you're putting him in isn't stopping on turn four to play a planeswalker that's literally not going to do anything that turn because you probably don't want to down tick it because you want to get it closer to its ultimate anyways but the plus one ability you're not going to be able to do anything unless you have shock in your hand like he, he he's really like a sidestep in what you're trying to do in your plan as a as a gruel and negative eight, you get an emblem with at the beginning of each end step, which is nice. Each yeah. end step is very nice. If it wasn't each, that card, that ultimate would be weak. Create a 4-4 four, four red and green beast creature with trample. So, like, during your turn, I'll get a 4-4, four, four, my turn, get a 4-4. Four, four. That's unbeatable. That's a game-winning emblem for sure. Yes. Um. Yeah, my biggest problem is that, like, it puts you in this awkward position where, like, it only increases the cards in your hand. Where you look at Vivian Reed, and Vivian Reed gives you future plans. Mm -hmm. She's like, hey, plus one me. And you can get an extra card. You'll always you'll always hit a land or a creature, or you can negative three me and kill something, get rid of something on the board. Right, because it's plus versus minus. Correct. Whereas like Domri is like, well, if you want to put things in your hand, you're really gonna have to like. The nice thing about Vivian Reed is that she starts at five. You can put her to six immediately, and she's basically protecting herself by being by being at six, and she's gotten you a card by going up, and she's progressing your 
what you're trying to do. Whereas like I dislike pluses that add mana because you're not going to be able to use them the turn they come into play. Yep. So by default, your first mode on Domri is like, well, I'm going to negative Domri yep. because I want to do something with it this turn. And then it goes to two. And that's real risky because it's already turn four. So it's like, it's kind of weird. I don't know. It's a weird, like, it's, like a, it's a, there's a weird tension on this card. I don't, I also don't think it's that great. Like, I think it's probably not that great, honestly, because if you look at the power level of the cards around it, if this card was remotely close to just busted, then the, then Gruul would be way too overpowered. Would you rather play Domri on turn four or Nullhide Ferox on four? Well, I mean, how can you? That's hard to. That's that's hard. That's just a generic question. I don't know. It's hard to answer that question. Or would you rather play? Yes. Creeping mold on turn four. Hundred percent creeping mold. How much is plow under? Can I plow? Not yet. Dang it. Around the time you were reluctant to plow, and then we plowed oh, everybody, man, and we they plowed, were like, and then is... all I ever wanted to do was plow. That's all I've ever wanted ever since that day. I was plowing on the way home. Okay, well, my hour, I, hour drive I worry about the safety of that, but I, I understand. Yeah, you plow enough. You just my point. Even... My point was that like Ferox presents an immediate threat that you kind of have to right. deal with, whereas like Domri is kind of like a threat to your life total. This is a threat to the late game. Yeah, it's it's fundamentally different. But I'm gonna. I don't even want to put it on the list. Really, you have to put it on the list because it's a planeswalker. Our, our, our li no, not even because there, there are crappy planeswalkers. Right, this will see play in sideboards. Doing what though? Whatever. Because people are gonna go, oh, I need the card advantage versus control, and then you neg it once, and you're like, oh, I got a creature, and now I have to plus it again. You okay? What? Are you okay? Frenzied Erinx, three three for four with Riot Trample, and it gets plus three plus zero oh if you spend six mana. Cool. I'll see you later, buddy. <laughs> Gruel Spellbreaker. This is a weird rare. Every time I kept looking at this in my, I had this in my sealed pool yesterday, and I was like, really? Why is this rare? Why is this rare? Yeah. A 3-3 three, three for 3 with Trample that could be a 4-4 four, four for uh -huh. 3. And he he has Hexproof. And on it, your turn. Yeah. Only on your turn. Yeah, but you're forcing people to tap out on their turn. You're forcing people to spend mana on their turn. Like, this card's great. This card's good. Oh. This card's great. All right, let's take a look at... Fanatic. Mog Fanatic? No, Fanatic of Xenagos. Isn't that the one that does X damage? Fanatic of Xenagos, a 3-3 three, three for 3. Yes. On par, but we have Tribute. So, Tribute says when it, when it enters the battlefield, if Tribute wasn't paid, it gets plus 1, plus 1, and gains haste until end of turn, right? So, if they put a counter on it, if they put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, it's a 4-4. Four, four. If they don't, it's a 4-4 four, four with haste until the end of the turn. So, kind of the, sim it's kind of the same thing, it's right? similar, it's, but your opponent doesn't choose. Correct. But they both have Trample. Mm -hmm. This is an uncommon. This is a rare. I don't know if they, as long as it's your turn. Oh, you and Gruul Spellbreaker have text proof. Yes. That's a big difference. Yeah. Now we're talking. Can't be settled. That's a big deal. Yeah. That was never relevant and limited, which is why I think I overlooked it. I was like, oh, I don't care about that. Yep. All right. Sold. Card's great. My opponent had this against me, and I think they messed up because this card's I literally dumb just started playing a bunch of big idiots. Yeah. And they were like, I can't kill anything you have. And I was like, yeah. And so I played the 8-8 eight, eight Gate Colossus. You, you had this? No, they had that. And they couldn't cast non-creature spells. So they couldn't actually deal with anything I was playing. Oh, So I they just had to saying. hope that their creatures were bigger than mine. Yeah. And they weren't. But this card lets you play out your entire hand in limited, though. Yeah, the you and and it getting getting hexproof, that's really that was the that was the big deal deal maker, I guess I would want to say. Anyway. And in, in constructed uh, Well, I guess I, I actually I, I could see um, I could see a teamer deck that plays this in standard, actually. If you play this on like turn three or turn four and you're And you know what you play after that? <laughs> and raise four runners, bro. No, what you play after that is the one that you draw X cards okay, and so gain on. X life. Let me let me let me let me pick your brain for a second, right? We play this guy. It's five five. Yes. We untap on turn six. Six lands. Make mm -hmm. 12 mana. Mm -hmm. We play this for three. We have nine mana left. Mm -hmm. And raise four runners. We attack with all of them. We got a 5-5. Five, five. This is a 3-3. Three, three. And a 7-7. Seven, seven. So what's that? 7, 10, 15, 6, 7, 8, 9, 21 damage. We just did it. Three cards. We just did it. Won the game. So this card's great, right? I think it's... I don't think it's terrible, but it's very... If it costs four mana, I'd be on board for sure. You know why I kind of like this? 
No, I don't. Tell because me. Because of the, the four mana three. Go four, on. The four mana three four with haste that adds mana for each creature attacking. That adds a red or a green. My biggest issue is that you can't cast non-creature spells is a big issue. Is it, though? If you have a dragon that lets you do two damage, fork bolt for four mana for two lands. I don't like it's legendary either. So, like, you want to fill your... This is, like, your, your centerpiece of your deck. Mm -hmm. And I hate when the centerpiece of your deck is legendary because then you can only play one of them. At a time. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. That is what legendary means. Thank you. I don't know. Do we... Gruel mono dudes with no Do we put tracks. on the list? Do we put on the list? Yes. I actually think this will be a card. And I actually, I'm going to... Can we look at the price of this while we're here? Why, you want to yeah, spike some real quick? I don't want to spike anything. I just want my copies. Did you buy any... Did you buy any of this? I didn't set? yet. No? Like I said, I've been looking at I've been looking at uh, Angel of Grace. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> it's just one That's card. the only card. It's the one card that really stood out to me. So... And it would, I feel like it would be in a deck that I would like. So Slaterman, I, thank you so much for the resub. Six months? It feels like longer than that, dude. It definitely feels like longer than that. What are we looking up? Nikia? <laughs> Nikia Oldways. <laughs> what are we looking at? The price? Yeah. MTG Goldfish. I would just... Can we just or TG fish? player, I mean. Sure. Yeah, I don't, want, I don't want... I don't know why I said Goldfish. I don't know. A dollar. It's a dollar. It's 109. All right, let's buy five. Right now? A thousand. Oh, there's 49 available. I'll just buy all of them. <laughs> Here, look, I'll just do this. Oh, I'll spike, boy. There you go. Done. They're going to remind you later. Hey, do you have these 49 Nikias? Anyway, in your card. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ravager Worm is a card I do like. I like this card, too. Uh, it's a six man. Miss Vixen, thanks so much for the resub. Sub baby's getting big. Three months. Three months, and uh, then we're good. Six mana for a four five. However, with Riot, it can be six mana for a five six, Pretty or good. it can be a four five haste. So you got a lot of options there. And also when it enters the battlefield, you can choose one. It can fight target creature you don't control, so it's like a Shriek Maul. Or you can destroy a land with an activated ability that isn't a, man a mana ability. So Field of Ruin, you can destroy... Search for us, Kanta. Search for us, Kanta. You can destroy Lost Legion, Legion's Landing. You Lost Legion's Landing. The, if, you, if, if they find it... Lost Legion's Landing of Kanta. If they ever find their Legion's Landing, you can destroy it. Boof. You can boof it. Boof. Along with PJ and Squee. I don't know what that means. It was a, it's a, you know what? I, I know who Squee is. What do you think of this card? This card's card, it's card yeah, good, it's, right? It's, it's good. I think the versatility on this card and the... Um, It'll see playing pod decks. There's no, there's not going to be any pod decks. There will be pod decks. R-A-V-A-G-E-R worm. Little Boofy. Little Boofy. Rest in peace. Re not, not rest in peace, but uh, he's still, he's still with us. He's just oh, in okay. prison still. That's Mike's cousin, Little Boofy. Back. Yeah, I know. Okay. Rhythm of the Wild. My opponent played this against me. It's and... just the rhythm. This card is busted against me and limited. This card's great in The any Riot format. creatures had double Riot, and I was yeah. like, nope, that ain't happening. Cheats. And is it's an uncommon. Is like, it why is this a rare? Is it constructible? Yeah, though? it'll be a basis of, basis of a deck. It'll be a basis of a deck. This goes in a pod deck. Oh my god, no. My Vanifer has haste. This reminds me of Fires of Yavimaya a lot. Yeah. I said that earlier. Did you? I did. I literally I said that. literally didn't hear you say that. I think you just stole I think it from you me. heard it. You just... Rubble, <laughs> That's rude. Rubble Belt Runner, three mana for a three three. It can't be blocked by creature tokens. Have we ever seen the art on a on a Viachino blank that's not like sprinting down a hill? Isn't this guy sprinting down a hill? Oh, you're saying this, yeah. Okay, this I think the they're trend. literally all they're the hill same. People. They're all just hill people, man. Yeah. Is that derogatory towards Viachino? Hill people. <laughs> Look at those hill people. <laughs> hey, buddy. I'm gonna appreciate that. Let's go back to your hill. It's uh, just to be clear, not gonna see any play. I just wanted to make sure we knew. This goes in a pod pie. <laughs> Savage Smash. Don't talk about pod pies. Three mana for a sorcery. Target creature control is plus two, plus two. It fights target creature you don't control. It's way too expensive. I'm not going to pay three mana for this. No I'm way. also not going to do it on my turn like a maniac. The only way that's good is if you're... Oh, they have this card I love. What do I look like, an idiot? Sunder Shaman. This card you love. Red, red, green, green. For a five, five. It can't be blocked by more than one dude. So Four mana, five, unless five. You got a, stupid. Unless you got a big dude, this guy ain't getting, any, ain't getting busted. Whenever Sunder Shaman deals combat damage to a player, you get to uh, Trigon Predator to them. Destroy an artifact or an enchantment. This card's great. This is so good. I don't even care the fact that it destroys enchantments. I, I just care that I'm attacking with a 5-5 five five and you're blocking it with a 2-3. I'm going to put it on the list because I think it is strong enough. Put to it on the list. Play. Put it on the list. This is a, this is a Golgari Feinbroker level where you're like, well, you got to just deal with this guy. Yeah. This stream needs more chicken? Send it in. Let's go, Viling. Bring it. 
Don't don't talk about it. Be about it. Z <laughs> wow. Zertog Goblin. Two mana for a 2-2 two, two with Riot. What do you think of this guy? Just the 3-3 three, three for 2? It's all right. It's, like a, it's basically a Watch Wolf that you can choose to give haste to. It won't be played, though. Really? You don't even think anything? Are we going to aggressive red green, red green deck? Maybe in a pod deck. I'm kidding. <laughs> Not in a pod deck. I hate you. Sorry. I hate you, actually. We hate each other. No, I hate you. I, I got it. Okay. Do not think this is... I'm waiting for someone in the chat to be like, you're crazy, Rob. <laughs> Those, Those are some short legs for a giant. <laughs> um, I feel like he's... He's, he's mid-squat. Yeah, he is mid-squat. Does like, he have a Jason mask on? No, they don't have they didn't have hockey back then. Oh, I don't know how to feel about this guy. I think it's it's a it's a three three for two, <laughs> or it is a two two haste. They said he looks like he made a superhero costume out of stuff from around his house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I want to put it on there. I think it's good. I mean, I can understand why you would think so. Right. I think it again, like a, a lot of because these, at the end of the day, it's a two mana three three. A lot of these assessments are hard because you don't know the the decks that they're going to fit into, but like. If there is a green red aggro deck, this is like yeah, definitely it's bread and butter to drop. Like if it's late game, I'll just attack you for two with my hasty guy. I, I figured you'd use your drug money to buy chicken, Abigail. It's not. It's actually not a bad. Oh god, I did a thing again. That was a joke about the pot pie. No, it wasn't. Is this a pod format? Okay, it's, de it's definitely not a gladiator format. Rubble stinger, two three foot reach. Skip. Okay, see you later. Collision Colossus. Collision is deal six damage to a target creature with flying, which is nice because it hits all the relevant, all the usual suspects, if you the will, usual in, in, in constructed. So uh, earlier I was watching um, Manguchi and he opened this in his seal thing. He's like, look at the art on that Colossus. I, I love I love Mandra. I, yeah, I love him too. I was like, he was like, look at the art on that Colossus. Look how strong he is. Just just a random dude walking down, walking down, just ripping trees out of the ground, just swatting people with them. I had the gate Colossus, yeah, and I played Colossus on it, and it was like <laughs> a great flavor win yesterday. <laughs> I colossus my Colossus. Yeah. Uh, cool. Target creature gets plus four, plus two against Trample. Trample's I, relevant. It is, but I don't think this card together is really good enough. No, no, not at all. I mean, it's definitely a sideboard it's card. It's a sideboard though. card, yeah. Is that enough to put on the list? No. Okay. Thrash and Threat. This card's good. Green, gr green, red, green, red. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or plant target you don't control. This is great because you're not fighting, so your creature's not going to die. Yep. And also you can do it to Planeswalkers. Oh, it which kills is, Tefri? Which has not been a thing recently. At instant speed. So you can play your Sundering Shaman, and then your opponent can play their Tefri, and if they don't get rid of your Sundering Shaman, you can just kill their Or Tefri. even if they get rid of your Sundering Shaman, you go, in response, I will thrash it. And kill your Tefri. Well, assuming you have the extra two mana. Yeah, I always assume Because that. it is an instant. Or I can just play my Zertog Goblin, give it haste, and then kill your Tefri. Yeah, holy cow, that card's great. Get Put wrecked. it on the list twice. Get twice. Or Threat, which is literally four mana for a 4-4 four, four with Trample, which is still good. also great. Yeah, this card's super versatile. I think both of the abilities are great. I heard you like versatility. So we gave you so a we card put some, versatility. We put some versatility on, on some versatility this card. first. Yeah, we got nothing here. <laughs> You can punch Tefri in his smug, stupid face. So actually, a surprising amount of... Uh, no, it's not surprising at all. That's not what I was talking about. Oh, sorry. Surprising amount of playable cards in the Gruul, uh, the Gruul clan. We have Cinder Vines, Domri Castbringer... Wait, that's exactly what I thought you were saying. Why is that not surprising? It be Because Gruul is like the most pushed colors in this entire set. I, when we started, I'm like, there's 30 cards that are going to be in this. And you just said that there's... All right, I'm sorry, I take it back. He did say there was going to be 30 cards, and I, was, I thought he was just joking, but no. now I realized he was making a... Uh... Anyway, Gruul Spellbreaker. Spellbreaker? Is that what that's called? Yeah, Spellbreaker. Yeah, because he huh. stops. he's Hexproof. What's the other Spellbreaker in Magic? Isn't there... Who's the other guy? There was spellbreaker another Behemoth. Gruul, spellbreaker Behemoth. Yeah, okay. Um. Yeah, so anyway, what I was saying, we have Cinder Vines, Domri Castbringer, Gruul Spellbreaker, Nikki of the Old Ways, Ravager Worm, Rhythm of the Wild, Rhythm of the Wild, Sundering Shaman, Zurta <laughs> Goblin, and Thrash Threat as the Gruul cards. And those, again, these will all be in the description below. Let's get to the Orzhov cards. I like Orzhov as a, as a guild. As Orzhov. What's as, your favorite guild? It's, as a, it's Simic, right? It's not. Really? It's not. As a guild, no. It's not Simic. <clears throat> uh, it might be Demir. And it might be Orzhov. Orzhov. Which is how they say it. I don't like saying it like that because it feels like too much work. Who's they? Uh, Wizards of the Coast. They say Orzhov? Yes. Are you serious? I'm 100% serious. Why would I lie about that? I don't believe you. Just to try and sound cool. What do you mean? Why would you lie to sound cool? That's what you do. Sometimes. Would I lie to sound cool? Sometimes. 
Let's see if it's in here actually. Oh my god, you're right. Yeah. Play it again. Rip it one more time. The Orshad Syndicate. Hit it again. <laughs> Hold on. Orshad Syndicate. Wow. The Orshad Syndicate. The Orshad Syndicate. The Orshad Syndicate. Orshav. Orshav is how they say it. Okay. Basilica Bell Haunt. Green, green, purple, purple. Pur pur purple. And that's, those are not the colors at all. It's for a 3 4. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card and you gain three life. This is one of the weaker ones. Yeah, and, and it's it's funny because I really want it to be cool. So do I. But, like, if you look at Fine Broker, right? Fine Broker returns any permanence from your graveyard to your... There's always one. <laughs> Rob leaned in to listen to his mic. <laughs> There's always one. That's not how I... Hold on. Let's do it again. They said I leaned into my microphone. I lean away to cough or to breathe. Chocolate rain. <laughs> <laughs> Some state. Uh, you think it's you think it should have flying because it's, it's a spirit, spirit. <laughs> and, and it, it doesn't make sense. Oh, um, <laughs> so if you look at something like Golgari Fine Broker, it returns any permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. So you're netting one card, and it could be the best card. It could be a Vraska, right? Oof. Whereas Basilica Bell Haunt, it's getting rid of the worst card in their hand. It could be a Plains, and then yeah, right. It's going to be a basic Oof. land most of the time, and you gain three. So it's like when you compare it to one of the other cards in this cycle, even as a three four. It just doesn't do anything. If you got to look at their hand and, and discard a card, that would be gas. Like in four mana, I really don't think that's no that that's too much out of the question. Pretty cool. Three but four it's body like, is it's kind of like a reverse Golgari Fine Broker at that point. <clears throat> anyway, this is really sad. I mean, this is great and limited, but I think that goes without saying. You're gonna play all of these like four color creatures if you can afford them. I so. wish they still made cards that said discard at random. That'd be cool if this I, one was discarded. I random. don't. I still don't think it would be played, but it, it's still that's cool. I lost to this yesterday. That was good times. This is the best card in limited. Ethereal absolution, five, six mana for uh, a permanent zealous persecution. Creatures you control get plus one plus one. Creatures your opponents control get neg one neg one. Oh, and you can make two two flyers. Yeah, and then you can for four mana you can exile a card from an opponent's graveyard. If it's a creature card, you gain you get uh, one one white black spirit token. You basically get afterlife for four mana. This card's the best card in limited. It is, but I don't think it's ever going to see constructive no, play. No, never. Six mana, for, six mana for this is a lot. No, it's not. Which is weird because it seems like oh well, I guess you're just it's just a constructed or it's just a limited card, but it's it's not. You know, there's casual players who would like this. There, it might be a commander card. Like, there's a lot of things that you can do with this card. That what's are, happening in the picture? Uh, I believe their spirits are getting. Are they ascending? Uh, they're being absolved ethereally. Is really what's happening. Okay. This is absolution. Tell me this is going on YouTube. My coworkers insist on that. Everything I record basically is going to go, it goes on YouTube. So yes, yes. And the first part will also go on YouTube. Are your coworkers watching? I can Are tell they them, always I can watching? Tell them to shut up. That's a magic reference. Always watching. Yeah, it is. They, they have vig their vigilance plus one plus one. If they're tokens, do you think his coworkers are tokens? No, that, is that always Are watching? Do you think they're tokens? Always watching wasn't tokens. Always watching was the one, was the colorless white, white. That was the enchantment they used during humans. That uh, Tom Ross won with humans. It was not for tokens. Final payment. A white and a black. I was right. Uh, as an additional cost to cast this, you can pay five life or sack an enchantment or a creature. It's a cool card, but... I like the versatility in the cost. Destroy target creature. <sighs> Exile, I get. Have you seen Assassin's Trophy? Um, yeah. That card seems better. A little bit. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think this card's gonna see any constructive play. Like it's just no, too it's no. too much there's too much <clears throat> Grasping Thrall, three three for five, floaty boys. Doesn't he just look like he annoys you? <laughs> He's like, Hey guys, what are you doing? Can you stop picking at me? God. Go away. Thrall. Why are you like this? When it's it enters the battlefield it deals two damage to each opponent and you gain two life, so commander oh. commander staple you think? No, uh two at a giant staple. Okay. I mean you'd play this anyway. Yes. But I'll never sleeve this up in my 60 deck. 60 deck. I play 61. Non-token creatures. That's what I said. Do you think they're non-tokens? You said token creatures. Get out of here. I knew it was this, a human's thing. Orshav. Orshav. Imperious Oligarch. Two mana for a 2-1 with Vigilance and Afterlife 1. Eh. If, if there is a... Orzov, just skip it. <laughs> I'm glad she's vigilant with her one toughness. 
Kaya. Orzov God, this Usurper. Is garbage. I don't like it. This is so bad. Three mana for a th another three mana. Two three mana planeswalkers in this set. And they're both kind of like very niche. Uh, for a three loyalty planeswalker plus one, exile up to two target cards from a single graveyard. So I can exile your mom and your dad if they're both in your graveyard. Gone. So cease to exist. Bruce Wayne's mom and dad. You can exile them both from the graveyard. Gone. Because they're both in there. They cease to exist. Too soon? I don't know. You gain two life if at least one creature card ago. was exiled this way. Okay, this card, honestly, I could see it played in Vintage. Negative one. Exile target non-land permanent with converted mana cost to one or less. That's why. Wouldn't you just want to play Dak Dak Faden? Yeah, but some people are weirdos and they like to play black white. Dak Faden just steals them. I don't know, man. And negative five. Whoa, Batman spoilers. Kaya <laughs> deals damage to target player equal to the number of cards that player owns in exile, and you gain that much. Hey, life. there you go. Look at that when they're delving for their treasure cruise. You just blast them. Like the number of things that has to go right for that negative five to actually be impactful. This is so bad. Why are we talking about it? I don't know because it's like this is this is going on the list. No, yikes! That's and what's scary is like three mana planeswalkers have such a history of being so strong, and this one's just. Not. I also really liked the Kaya from Conspiracy. Yes, and I wanted to see that a similar Kaya. Yes, like a, another powerful Kaya that was playable in standard or modern. That and, and it wasn't even overpowered. It just did such random things is what made it good. The problem with exiling a non-land permanent with converted mana cost one or less, all the ones I can think of sacrifice themselves. Engineered explosives, relic of progenitus, Nihil spell bomb, like all the relevant ones are literally just utility cards that you can sacrifice like I can't think of other other like one drops that I care about Deathrite Shaman's Band Sensei's Divining Top okay you'll exile it I'll, I'll draw a card with it are, put are it you top. talking about in, in Legacy? I'm talking about any format where you have one drops that you care about no they don't exist like that's what I mean like it's such a weird ability Chalice like you wouldn't even play first off you don't even want to play this to be able to go oh I killed your one drop like that's especially in an older format you, you don't want to play your three drop to, to deal with their one drop their Delver you know what I mean like that's just bad. I mean, I guess you can hit, like, yeah, like, you can hit Soul Rings and Mana Crypts in, like, older formats. That's but... That was the, the literal only reason I brought it up. Also, the same with Exiling two cards. But, like, again, this is, feels like a very, very strictly, like, sideboard card. I just don't understand this card. I really don't. I can't, I can't even read it. I don't even know what the last name is. <laughs> it's Slurpee. Slurpee. Kaya Orzov Slurpee. Orshov Slurpee. Orshov Slurpee. Anyway, move on. Are we going to order pizza soon? We can do it when we're done with this one. Okay. We're almost done. Take it easy. Sorry, I get all I know you do. fancy in my pantsy. I know you do. When I get the syrup in me. Kaya's Wrath. White, white, green, black, black. Now it's an Abzan card. <laughs> Destroy all creatures for four mana. You gain life equal to the number of creatures you control this way. This card's great, right? Oh, yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. We have not done Simic. We're going in order. So if you're if we're on Orzhov... Then we got Rakdos and Simic yet. Not everybody thinks like you. But thanks for assuming they do. Don't they? No. Why not? What would they? What order would they put it in? Mm. Wooberg? Wooberg? Yeah, that's white, blue, red, white, blue, black, oh, red, green. Oh, Wooberg. Mm -hmm. Like Wo Wooby Goldberg. That's what I thought you were saying. <laughs> I thought you had a mini Anyway, this this card's great. I, they, like, the mana cost is obviously restricted, but we also have 10 different shock lands in the format. So. Did you put it on the list? Oh, 100%. It was the first... It's literally the first Orzhov card that I put on here. Orzhov. Is... Quit saying it like that. It's okay if you don't say that. Like, I don't... Yeah, but I want to be... Just say it like the population, not the people who made it. <laughs> Everyone says Orzhov. Like That's GIF versus okay. GIF? Yes. I said GIF until people laughed at me. It's, it is GIF. Or, I'm sorry, GIF. Oh, you said GIF? I'm so confusing. I'm so confused now. <laughs> Both of those are accurate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Night of good. the Last Breath. Seven mana for a 4-4. Four, four. All right. Well, I don't even have to read that. I don't even have to read it. It's so bad. Sacrifice another non-token creature. Create a 1-1. One, one. I have to pay three mana and sack a creature to make a 1-1? One, one? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> We're literally just seeing these cards for the first time. <laughs> I, have to, I am. Like, I've never looked. At, I didn't look at the spoiler yet because yeah. I wanted to be, I wanted to have the, the, the genuine, like, saying cool whip. Cool whip. Why are you saying it like that? Whip. I'm just saying cool whip. Uh, and then Afterlife 3 is fine, but like 7 mana for this idiot. Like, no. Gift. Just get out of here, dude. Mortify? Mortify is good. Lo love love the art, actually. Mortify is a good card. It will definitely see constructed play. It's do you three prefer mana. old art or new art? It depends on the card. In general. I, mean, it, I don't think you can. How do you go by in general? I'm going to ask you to generalize it. 
If I said right now, the rest of your entire magic life, when you played in paper, which was never, you have to you, you have to choose. Say, I will use the earliest set art or the newest set art. I like old borders. Okay. But if like a card like Mortify always only has new borders, so I would just go by art. Okay. I don't. I don't think I have. I don't think I like it's. So you didn't answer the question. I okay. didn't because I don't think there's any inherent value to answering that question. Like there's no like. But what what value? What do you lose if you answer it? If I answer, it's going to be arbitrary because some old art. Stop arts using I like. these large words that me and like ninety three percent of your chat can't understand, oh man. Oh my god, it's just an arbitrary answer that has no value, right? Like I, you just use the word to describe it. Again. I, I don't know what the hell's going on. If Jesus. I say, let me say new art, right? I'll say new art, cool. But you don't get anything out of that because it's not accurate, accurately representing my my preference. It's just an, an answer I chose to to satisfy your. Okay, do you like do you do you like uh, the Master Series Brainstorm or Ice Age? I like the Mercadian Masks Brainstorm. <laughs> Jesus Christ, just get this card. It's on the list. Put it on the list. <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus. Pitiless Pontiff. A white, black for a 2-2. Sacrifice another creature against death touch. And this card's fine. You're one of the 7%. Congratulations. Wait, what just happened? Pernicious dude said he understands you. So I said, cool, you're one of the 7%. I'm going to let that one go. Can I call it? Can I answer it? No. Is it from work? Uh, I don't know. I want to be like, hey, yo. Yeah, I got that. Where you? Which? How much you want? I got that. All right. Is this card good? Is this Carpolo? No. Is it Carpolo? The card's not Polo. There's zero Pololility. Not what I said. Is this card playable? Can we, we play are this the ninety three percent? Can we play this card? If there is a, if there is if enough like synergy an aristocrat for, for aristocrats, then yes, this is one of your sack outlets. Do we think there is? No, I, I tried. I don't think there is. I'm going to say no as well. I don't think so. By itself, as a 2-2 two, two for 2, it does nothing. Whereas, like, at least the Zulta Goblin, it is a 3-3. Three, three, or it is a 2-2 two, two with haste. This doesn't do anything. It is a vampire, though. So? Since winter tribal synergy is good. We got, like, Legion Lieutenant. You have, like, all kinds of vampires. We've had that. Radiant Destiny. But can't you just add this? No. Because there's nothing to add it to. The vampire deck. There's not one. Dang it, Rob. Radiant what about this card? Destiny. Tell me this card's good. I like this card a lot. Seraph I know you do. A 4-3 for 4. It floats. She can gain vigilance. And I'll be honest with you. The fact that I love this card might have a lot to do with the artist, but... Oh, is that what it is? I was actually going to say... Oh, yeah, she's one, of my favorite, she's one of my favorite magic artists. What's her name? Uh, Magali. I don't know how to actually pronounce her last name. Villanueve? Yeah. No, that's not. Villanueve. It's V-I-L-L-A, right? Yeah. And you... I have to see that. I have to see yeah, that. Yeah, her art's phenomenal. No, I agree. The art is pretty good. She was the one who sent me the signed Leovold mat, which was oh, super sweet. sweet. And then I got the Leovold up here. Look at him. Uh, Seraph of the Scales gains Death Touch for one black, gains Vigilance for one white, and Afterlife as well. The card's, the card's good. I like it. I mean, like, if they kill it, you get two one ones. Like, it, it protects itself in that way. It's still a 4 3. Give me. You just love things with three butts. I don't, but the things I love happen to have three butts. Okay, I agree. Give you what? What do you want? I'm sorry. What? What? Did you, I wanted you, feedback because you weren't saying anything. I don't think this card's any good. It's a four mana. It's way. Okay. It's way too fragile. I, I agree. I understand that it's you get two one ones. I, I don't. Eh. Sorry, man. I forgive you. Thank you. It's not you. It's not. Syndicate Guild Mage. We already know. Playable in... in tap target creature with power four or greater. That's actually pretty good. That's not bad, because you can tap down, like, Bane Slayers and stuff, like Lyra's. Those don't exist. You know what I meant. Oh, sorry. You know what I meant. Syndicate Guild Mage deals two damage to target opponent or Planeswalker for five. That's also not terrible. You just love three butts. <laughs> <laughs> what's the... What's the... the quote, what's the quote tag? Probably butts. Butts. Lava coil. Lava coil. All right, we're just going to move on this. Not constructible. No. Tesla. Tesa. Te, Tesla. Tesla. <laughs> Nikolai Tesa Karlov. I saw a video today of a dog saying uh, Tesla's autopilot is so is so easy that my dog can do it, and the dog was just driving around in autopilot. That's, that blows my mind. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> he was just hanging out the window. Alive. He was just hanging out the window in the parking lot. <laughs> Two, four, for four. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger... That ability triggers an additional time, so like afterlife would trigger twice. Creature tokens you control have vigilance and lifelink. This card seems good. It does. It's a panharmonicon effect. If there's a, it's a reverse. Yeah, it's a reverse panharmonicon. Yeah. 
If there's a token deck, is this good? Yeah, I definitely think so. So what are we, where do we... There's no token deck. (laughs) God. (laughs) Maybe next set. There's, hey, there's always next set. When the spark comes back. I'm going to keep moving forward. Yeah. Abigail is Alexa. Viscopa Vampire. Three mana for a 3-1 lifelink. That's cool, man. I'm really happy with... Alexa, stop. I did that. I'm sorry. I know you did. I don't even know what she was doing. I just said Abigail equals, and I don't... No, don't say the rest. I don't. Didn't. Okay, bye. Consecrate, consume. Consecrate is two mana. Exile target card from a graveyard. Draw a card. Okay, that's super niche. Consume for four mana. cycles. I guess. Target player sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. You gain life equal. That's not That's not bad. That's cool. Hexproof seven, six you got. I'll gain seven. Yeah. Oh, that's a good Carnage Tyrant answer. I like that. Mm-hmm. Do we put it down? No. Dang it. We came close, though. Revival and Revenge. Revival is two mana. Return target creature cost card with the converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. I like this a lot. That's pretty good. Because you can get, like, a Militia Bugler for two mana. You can get back the Zertar Goblin. That's true. That's a 3-3. Three, three. That's smoke. Revenge. Double your life total target opponent loses half their life rounded up. That card, that's also very good. It's kind of, I mean, it's a cool effect, but I don't think it's a play. Really? Mm-mm. So if you're, if you're both at 16, you go up to 32, they go down to 8? That's huge. I think I think that's very. You double your life total, and they lose half their life. I mean, it seems good. So if you're at twenty, six. like if you just haven't taken damage, you go to forty, and they go to ten. I don't know. I think this card's fine. I think that's. I think it's very very versatile. Also, we have two cards on here so far, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna add another one. Looking thin. It's looking thin. Orzhov. The three cards that we have seen from Orzhov are Kaya's Wrath, Mortify, and Revenge Revival. And, uh, what do you guys think of an Esper Spirits deck with Tesa, that six drop, all Prime Phantom, Departed Deckhand? I I think I I don't I don't know I don't think I don't hear any power there. I don't. I, don't I do not hear there. any power there. This card is great. <coughs> Look for it at your local F and M. At local everything. <laughs> this card's awesome. This card will be played in modern, I think. Just because it is our main deck way to hit artifacts, like that's pretty sick. This card is insane. Yeah, it's your typical hero's downfall. I don't your even think, I, like I don't even think it's insane, right? It's just it's a hero's it's downfall great. that can hit artifacts now. This is great, but like it's three mana. It's insane in the fact that you took a staple card mm. that needed no improvement whatsoever and you added another card type to destroy. Yeah, like that's crazy. I think yeah. I think the card is just very. Yeah. very I very love small. the card. I think it's awesome. Why don't you marry it? I would, but I can't. I don't believe that's true. Sorry, I Captive up. audience. This is what people were talking about, right? Yep. So this is just a reverse uh, demonic demo, dark petition. No, dark. demonic pact. Demonic pact. No. How's it a reverse? Because demonic oh, pact. Oh yes, You yes, have a yes, card. Yes, you yes, make yes, three yes, choices yes. on you're that right, card. You're right. You're right. They have a card. They make three choices yeah. on that card. Captive audience. Seven mana. It enters the battlefield under the control of an opponent of your choice. I will choose you. Your life total becomes four. No, it doesn't. I don't choose that. Discard your hand. No. And each opponent creates five two two black zombie creature token. No, I scoop. Okay, well, I scoop. My job is done here. <laughs> what do you think of this card? Uh, it costs seven mana. It's the art is sweet. Look at Fibblethip. It's thip. not. Look at Fibblethip. <laughs> He's covering his non mouth. <laughs> That's oh amazing. my god. That's adorable. It's not. It's not legendary either. So you can actually no. just play one after the other after the other. I like this. I like this card. I worry. I do worry that seven is too much. But is it possible that there's a black red X control deck like a Grixis control? Yeah, there's deck a black. Standard? There's a black red Mardu deck that that Ali was playing with. Is boom crushing people with it? Because the nice thing about this is like while it doesn't do something when it enters the battlefield, it kind of does. No, it does because you play it and then you pass. Yeah, and it, it goes does. to their upkeep. Yeah, it definitely does. The one thing I wish is that there was a fourth choice that says you lose the game. They, I mean, they, that's the point of the whole card, right? It kind of already does that. Because it's it's interesting. Well, actually. I mean, their, their life total becoming four is very, very scary. Also, discarding your hand is scary. This card is really strong. I'm putting it yeah, down. No, we know, Josh, we know this is the card you donated about, but he wouldn't, he didn't he didn't want me to tell him about it until we saw it here. This is the one he donated to have you build a deck about. This card's great, so I'm glad I like it. I'm glad I like this card. This card is gas. Yeah, it's cool. Definitely cool design. Fun, I'm gonna, fun games. I'm going to buy this card, and I'm going to build around it, and people are going to be like, God, I can't believe I lost that seven-man enchantment this again. Isn't even, this isn't even that great in show-and-tell. Like if you, oh, I think that's why I said show and tell troll. 
because you're trolling them. N- well, no, their, their their point is that they cast show and tell, and then you put this into play. But I mean, they're still gonna probably draw seven cards in response to the effect of their life total becoming four. They have a gristle brand in play already. This isn't that great. I'm gonna move on now. Cult Guild Mage, the red, green, black turtle guild mage. That's a creepy, <laughs> creepy art. Yeah, the baby Jace is really scary there. Oh, it's baby Jace, you're right. Yeah, you didn't notice that? That is insane. Art's better. Four mana for a two, for, it's a two, two, four mana. Target player discards a card, activates only when you can cast a sorcerer, obviously. And one red, you deal one damage target opponent. Player. This is not terrible. Mm-hmm. Again, playable and limited. Not going to make its way over to construct, I imagine. However, one thing worth noting is that uh, his second ability does trigger spectacle. Mm-hmm. If you really do need that in constructed. There's other ways. Um. Right, but just saying. This card's great. This art is pretty insane. This card's great. Everything about this card. Fireblade Artist, 2-2 two, two for 2. Haste. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice a creature. You when you may. do it, it deals one, 2 damage to target opponent. That's actually pretty great. Yeah, this card's awesome. You can sacrifice your afterlife tokens, you to afterlife s- creatures. To or get- your gutter bones. I'll never sacrifice my gutter bones, buddy. You can get it right back. Talk about your own gutter bones. Leave my gutter bones out of it. Whatever, man. And yeah, this card's great. I would put this on the list. This 100% will be fun. And it's surprising it's an uncommon. This seems like a rare ability. Oh my gosh, I just realized something. It triggers the young pyromancer. Who's the young pyromancer? The multicolored young pyro. Are you serious? The best card in white? The best card we pro- well. Oh, you can so you can play that guy in two and this guy on yeah. three. Sure. And then you get it, then you actually get a 1/1 one, one to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. It's uh, the synergies are real, man. Woo. Let's get to the point. <laughs> I mean, this card's great and limited. Five mana for an instant, and you get to scry, but we're Ooh, not going to... it's gonna, an instant. We ain't going to be playing, paying this much in Constructed, for sure. Cool art, though. I'll see you later. Oh, wait. Look at these cards. These are like the same positions. These are the same perspectives. Mm-hmm. Hack... Hack... Ro- Hackrobat. Okay, I was like, hack robot. I don't understand. Hackrobat. <laughs> three mana for a 2-3. Spectacle 2, so it could be two mana. Hackerbat gains death touch until end of turn. Hackerbat's a plus two, negative two, so it's a four one. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, I'm not excited about this. I'm never going to be excited about paying three for this, but I will play it in limited. Like it's 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 versatile enough. The fact that you can attack for four is nice and kill anything. It's versatile enough to play in limited. Mm-hmm. Sure. Judith, yeah, it's your girl. Judy, Judy, Judy. This is it's a your girl. This is a curb meme. If anybody any curb fans out there, Judith the Scourge Diva, three mana for a two two. Other creatures. Diva. Other creatures you control get plus one plus so. All right, we got a little got a little <clears throat> little lord 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 action here. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, she deals one damage to any target. That's... All right, so let's talk about this now that they've all been spoiled. Turn one one drop, right? You keep track. Gutter bones. Gutter bones. Gutter okay, bones. so two two power, right? <sighs> Turn two, you play the hero, the one one young hero. I need a hero. Yeah, you got one. <laughs> Turn three. You got it. You play Judith, trigger your Pyromancer, right? Okay. Turn four, you play Heroic Reinforcements, you attack for 20, over 20 damage. I mean, that assumes that they have literally nothing. They, they just like, land, go. Land, go. That's fine. So think of it this way. Let's say they kill your Judith, right? Because that's your highest power level card. Sure. Okay. They kill your Judith. They just took one damage still, right? On turn four, after they killed and they didn't put anything on the board, you're still attacking for... Uh, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 damage without Judith. Are you trying to say that Judith should be on the list? 100%. That's all you had to say, man. I don't know why you got into this whole rigmarole about, like, little boy, creatures and a mother. This card's awesome. Give them pluses and values and make them do the damages. And I was just like, you could just say it's good. No, whatever, man. Yeah, this card seems good. Three mana for a 2-2 that has multiple abilities is totally fine she is legendary though so if you have others in your hand you're just gonna be you're just gonna look real dumb no you don't actually because you just cast it and then deal one damage to someone's mouth wow you deal damage to people's mouths sometimes one at a time that's rude macabre mockery that's what you make of our entire stream i'm hungry we're almost done yeah i know let's do it we are doing it all right man keep it going Macabre, four mana, put target creature card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gets plus two, plus oh, and gains hit. This is what I don't understand, because, oh, you sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. Oh, it's on the graveyard, though. Okay, cool. I'll see you later. It is an instant as well. That's actually That's fun. cool. I like that it's an instant, because you can go, like, uh, in response to, before blocks, get your guy back. Or, like, if, if um, 
if Golgari's still a thing and they're flipping like creatures in their graveyard, you can like take attack for nine <clears throat> trample damage. The best part is that like uh, of cards like this is that you can steal their creature, block their other creature, and it's a two for one. Mm. Whereas like if you're just using Macabre Mockery and the guys in the graveyard already, it's just a one for one. So mm. I don't know. Whatever, it's fine. Mm. I'm alright. Rafter Demon, four mana for a four two a spectacle. It costs one more actually. When it enters the battlefield, if a spectacle cost was paid, each opponent discards a card. So I have to pay five mana for a four two that makes you discard. Draft chaff. Yeah, pretty much. Fire Wheeler. That's pretty sweet. Four three for four. When it enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to target opponent and two damage to up to one target creature or planeswalker. It's not bad. I don't think the, I, I don't, don't think, think Rakdos is going to four mana. Right. And I don't think this is what they want if they if they are because I think they're just better options. Uh, Rakdos Roustabout. Three two for three. When it enters the when it becomes blocked, it deals one damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. Draft chaff. So it's basically like a, that's isn't that just a flicked one? Uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But you can target. Sure. Planeswalker. Sure. Rakdos the Showstopper. A six six for six. What are you laughing at? This card was played against Saffron Olive, and uh, he had four he had four creatures <clears throat> on the battlefield, and the animation on Arena for this card is it doesn't individually like trigger flips so you don't like see it tar like okay this one we're flipping and it dies so it's just, this just one like five, one, everything whatever. happens at one time so his opponent played this card and then instantly his entire board goes and they killed every single creature on his board with it <laughs> it's pretty good it was funny i feel like it should be some way to say that like it should it should it should like indicate that somewhere you know when Rakdos, the showstopper, enters the battlefield, flip a coin for each creature that isn't a demon, devil, or imp. Destroy each creature whose coin flips. This is interesting because it also kills your creature, so you're mm. heavily incentivized to build around this mm -hmm. and not include any non-demon devils or imps in your deck. Um, I mean, this is a very flavorful card, but I don't think it's constructive. No, it's not. definitely not. The, the Tetsamok's just better, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a much just better. Theater of Horrors. Three mana at the beginning of your upkeep. Exile the top card of your library. Sure. Very typical red card where I'm like, oh, I exile a card. And during your turn, if an opponent lost life this turn, you may play cards. Exile the Theater of Horrors. It's okay, I guess. I mean, so it's just basically like instead of four mana. You pay three. You're paying and three. You have to activate it. But you actually have to deal damage in order to cast this. That just doesn't seem worth it. But, I'd rather just play four. But the one difference about this card, though, is this one lets you play lands. It does say play cards. Yeah. Ugh. It does say, yeah, it does say play cards instead of cast. Uh, and then it, you, for four mana, you can deal one damage to target opponent or planeswalker. And just, that's a lot of mana. Like, would this be more playable if it was three mana? For the theater? For, yeah, for the activated ability. Like, I don't know if that's ever making a difference. To like, answer your question, like, yes, it would be a little more playable. Hmm. Footlight Fiend? That's a weird card name. What is he doing back there? Wait, hold on. Oh my god, is he looking at someone's feet? Oh, see, that's interesting. During your turn, if an opponent lost life this way, you may play cards exiled with Theater of Horrors. It doesn't oh, matter. Oh, so you can play it, it doesn't everyone matter. you flipped. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's not just the specific one you revealed that, that turn. That is cool. That does make a huge yeah, difference. Yeah, that would be something I, I to feel like you understand the power, you have to try it. That seems really sweet. Well, yeah, because like if you're getting like six, seven cards under Theater of Horrors every turn, like... And you have this huge option of cards to play. Like, that's actually very powerful. Yeah, that, that's Well, there sweet. it is. <laughs> that's awesome, actually. Yeah, that's, that's actually... Cool effect. That changes my opinion drastically. I was saying it was great to begin with. I don't know why you weren't on board. But... Yeah, I don't... I think you you really caught on to the, the niche I, ability I of the it. card. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I don't... Rob, I don't get it. Can you explain it to me? Dumb. And I went too quickly, so I didn't even give you the chance to really explain Wrong. the full power level of the card. Wrong. So I understand. Yeah, it's right. I get it. That's That was my fault. It's. I mean, I choose this life, so... Footlight Fiend. This one man minute. is literally staring at people's feet. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> he is! Look at him. He's just hidden it. behind his little... I his little. It. First off, he's hidden behind... Uh, when, it, when it dies, it deals... It's a 1-1 one, one for 1. It deals 1 damage to anything when it dies. I like that. You just don't want that awkward on the screen anymore. So in this in this set, there is a Bedevil, a Bedeck, and a Bedazzle. <laughs> There's a lot of be being but being uh, be be in the set. He's a fiend of the feet in the in the light. Target creature gets plus three, negative three until end of turn. So that is literally just last gasp for two mana, which is great. Great card. Bedazzle is destroy non-basic land. It deals two damage to target opponent or planeswalker for six mana. Yeah, it's, that's basically just cut that card in half. A little too expensive. But the but like so here's the thing. The Bedeck is nice, right? Like, I would probably play this on its own because that's a useful ability. 
But Dazzle being able to just hit a search for his content or in his content in the late game is six mana. But you have it. The card is just there. You're already playing Bedeck in your in your deck. Bedeck in your deck, right? I don't know. Like it's it's a nice ability tacked on. And also if they like tuck something with their Tefra, you can kill their planeswalker too. I don't know. It's not terrible. I'm trying to see like chat chat's going off right now. Bedonk, Bedazzle, Bidet. Lots of bed. We're getting bedurbled to Bedeath. This is a this set is Bedevic. There's a Bedonka Dog. I don't know. I, I think it's I think it's niche. Oh, this is the rare. Ugh. Oof. Oh, did I put these out? I think I put these out of order because yeah, here's the uh Carnival Carnage. Carnage deals Carnival deals one damage. I like this card. Um oh actually no, they're not out of order. They're, they're alphabetically in the in the right yeah. order, that's why. Carnival does one damage target creature or planeswalker and one damage to that permanence controller. I don't think that's great. And then Carnage deals three damage to opponent. They just it's an instant, cards. which is nice. The Carnage isn't. No, the, the Carnival one. Because you you said it's that's one damage not that great. though. Like what does that do? It triggers your spectacle, that's the only reason. I mean, it's, you're basically two for one of yourself then, just to your spectacle, which I don't love. You're playing this card to cast the different spectacle card cheaper, which I don't. I don't think it's great. I don't think either of these cards are going to make the list. No. But I could see Bedeck Bedazzle like making. I can see an argument made for that. Anyway, the number of Rakdos cards is only five that we're sure of. I think we're kind of sure of is Bedevil, Captive Audience, Fireblade. No. Those are all sure. Those are all slam dunks, I think. Fireblade Artist, Judas the Scourge Diva, and Theater of Horrors will all see some amount of play, I would imagine. Uh, still leaving Gruul as the highest, you know, one. Highest one. The highest guild so far. Let's get into the crazy, the crazy simmies. And if you guys have not done so, check out MeUndies.com slash Frank Lepore. You'll get 15% off along with free shipping and free returns. And they're super soft, super super soft. Mini modal. I'm sure there's a, a micro modal. Min, mini modal. And I'm, I'm sure at least someone in the chat can vouch for the comfort of, of high me, performance of, of underwear. The MeUndies. Arrow Monculus two three for for three, which is a fine rate. However, like you have things like like Trigon Predator, that also destroy, um, what do you call it? Artifacts. Or Artifacts enchant or enchantments, right? So like, I mean, there's lots of two three flyers that have better abilities than this. Isn't Trigon Predator a 3-2? Just write them all down. I don't think that's how that works. What did you say? Trigon, Trigon Predator? Predator is a 3-2, I think. Not two no, three. it's a 2-3. Is it? Yes. Whatever, man. Stop being a little baby. I was being serious. I know. That's why I think you're being a little baby. Why? Why am I being a baby? Because I And then, like, like, so the four, for four mana... So for seven mana total, this you get a three draft. point flyer. It's, you're right. I just trying to like. I'm trying to explain like why this is so. We're trying to indulge in the simicness of this. This card blew me out yesterday. It was unbelievable. Really? Yeah. I double blocked one creature and I blocked my four four on another four four. They made their oh. four four a five five. Killed your creature. Killed my guy. Creature. They bounced one of my double blockers. Oh, so then I ate the other creature. Yeah. So they literally it was it was the biggest blowout I've ever experienced because it's choose one or both. Not constructible. But definitely a really, really strong limited card. Yes. It's insanely good. Hard, anything, yeah, definitely. Biomancer's Familiar. Look at this little weirdy. Welcome to modern. 2-2 two, two for, for, for two. Activated abilities of creatures you control cost two less to activate. So this is your training grounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how many, fucking, how many Hershey's Kisses did you put on me? None? Okay. I ate them all. I can't trust you. I've done zero today. This effect can't start. reduce the amount uh, less than one, which makes total sense. They Just never literal training grounds. Free mana. The next time target creature adapts this turn, it adapts as though it had no one one counters on it. So you can you can basically adapt for free, or, or no. you know to more than once rather. Yes, because adapt specifically states if it has, if it has no, no one one counters. counters. Right. You like this card? Yeah, this is a modern staple. A staple. Yeah, it, it it creates modern decks. You know what? I don't believe you, but we'll see. I want to be open minded about it. It's better than training grounds. You can find it with. Well, yes, but that, what does that say? That doesn't say much. Whatever, man. I love you. I know. I love you. Combine Guild Mage. What are you combining it with? Hugh, 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 Hugh. Who's Hugh? <laughs> Who's Hugh? That's me. It's Hugh. So we got a 2-2 two, two for 2. The first ability of this turn, each creature you control enters battlefield with additional plus multiple counter. That's actually very strong. I mean, you pay two mana extra for your creatures, but in the late game, like, your 1-1s one become 2-2s. Two or... Very good effect. And it's each creature. So uh, you activate this once, and if you play two two guys, like a 1-1 one, one and a 2-2, two, two, they both get counters. Yeah. That's actually very strong. Move a 1-1 one, one counter from target creature you control onto another target creature. That's also fine. Because if one of your creatures is going to die, you can just save the counter. This is a good guild mage. Yeah. Frilled Mystic Snake. 
Elf. I'm really sad that of all the creature types that they put on this thing, they put elf. Snake couldn't be one of them. Snizzard. Especially when there are snakes. Come on, just give me a snake. <clears throat> give me a mystic snake. <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> give me a frilled mystic snake here. Anyway, this card is a three-two instead of a two-two. Still costs four mana. Only costs one extra green, and it, you can counter a spell with it. This card's awesome. I'm definitely putting it down on the list. I don't even care if you guys agree. No, this card's great. You'll see play. I agree with you. I Th think it's, it's a hard card, counter. It's this a card hard makes, counter that gives yeah, you a creature. This card makes archetypes, and it attacks for three. And there are cards that blink things, so you could literally play the white, like, juice, juice dishers. Just disher. And then you can blink this dude and counter Just something else. Galloping Lizrog, a frog lizard. He looks like he just taps people on the head as he's going by. He's like, oh, watch out, man. Don't we all. Watch out, man. So five mana for a 3-3. Three, three, trample. When it enters the battlefield, you may remove any number of 1-1 one, one counters from among creatures you control. If you do, put twice that many counters on this. So if I remove three counters, I'll put six on this guy. It's a 3-3 three, three for five. It's not seeing play outside of limited. And I'll see you later. Nope. Grow Spiral is, 100%. is great. My best, my favorite thing about Grow Spiral is it lets you pass the turn, keep your frilled Mystic mana up, and then you can still play your quote unquote rampant growth or explore at the end of their turn. So you're still able to ramp, but you're also able to hold the counter spells up, and you're playing blue. So that is relevant. So here's something I heard earlier about this card that completely um, caught me off, I'm off guard that, I, that I'm sure you haven't thought of. Oh wow! How dare you? <clears throat> if you put this card into the um, Standard Drake decks. So you go turn one, play a spell, right? Opt. Turn two on instep, they do nothing or you don't interact with them. You cast Growth Spiral, mm -hmm. draw a card, mm -hmm. pl put your land in play, mm -hmm. cast Opt, cast Shock. Turn three, you get to play a Crackling Drake. That's a three, four, and you draw a card and you still have six cards in your hand. Sure. That's just dumb. I mean, I think Crackling Drake should be banned, but whatever. What? The card's obnoxious, dude. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I am. I don't think. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't okay. Think, yeah. But but I mean that's pretty pretty Bandit. sweet. Bandit wizards. It's really sweet. Please ban it. Anyway, gross pile is great. Yeah, cards. Awesome. Outside of your stupid Drake's deck, cards great. It's great in any deck. Geyer engineer, Geyer Geyer Geyer. It's Geyer. Geyer sage. John, you doing all right? You get I'm that? I'm doing. Yeah, it's just you know how it goes. Do I? I gotta make money, man. That's not money. You're not paying me to be here. Pretty sure that's Astrid. It is her. So how are you making money from? Is she? Do, I have to do, pay. I have to pay, do her I have texts to pay money for that? Do her texts make you money? I have to pay money for that. One th one one for three, and you can add two mana. Nope, not happening. Not happening. <clears throat> Hydroid. This is a controversial card. I have I've been outspoken about my confusion about this card. Oh, really? Uh, Blue-green X, zero, zero. When you cast this spell, you gain half X life. I wish this had flash. That mm. would be that would put it over the top for me. Mm. 100 hey. for Swole Mike. I'm paying you. Why that buys me. Want? Thank you so much, buddy. That buys me a hamburger at McDonald's. I appreciate that. A hamburger. A bubble, a bubble, a bubble. Can you give me my bits? That when I you cast some? this spell, you gain... Where's my... That was a handshake. I can't pay with that. Yes, you will one day. <laughs> Never wash the hand. You gain X health, X life, and draw half of X cards. Round down each time. Flying trample. It enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. So, like, I keep going over the rates here that you have to pay. So, like, if you want a 4-4, four, four, it costs you six mana, and you draw two and gain two life. Here's a hint. Don't cast this for three mana. You will be sadly disappointed. It's three mana. Even no odd numbers is not where you want to be three with this Three mana card. is you draw zero, gain zero, What's and the get a sweet one, one. spot for this card? Like, what, what mana do you pay? And you're like, this is. I feel okay with this. The sweet spot for this card is probably in your binder. Okay, so we agree. Yeah, no, this card's no good. All right. I want it to be good. Right? It feels like it's this card's, Sphinx's revelation. This card's good in a ramp deck, right? If you're ramping. Deck. So, if it's you pay too 10, expensive. 10 total mana. No, that's not going to happen. See, you're already way... That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like So, 8 total mana, and it's still high, but you're only drawing, what, 3 cards at that point? We had a 5 mana 2-2 two, two flyer and that drew me 2 cards, say, gained knew. me 2 life, Yeah, the thing. and wait. it cost me 6. Oh, Cloud Blazer is what you're Yeah, talking and about. this cost, cost me five. 6. Right. It cost 6 to do yeah. that. Yeah. Like, I get there's an upside, but like if I'm already able to cast this for 8, that means there's probably a chance that I'm already... Ha winning the game well let's think about cloud blazer actually it's a 2-2 flyer for five yep that draws you two gains you two yep 
This is a 4-4 four, four flyer for 6 that draws you 2 gains to 2. Is that good enough? It's not a 4-4 four, four flyer for 6. This is. For 8. No, no, no. It's rounded down. The counters aren't, though. And there's a battlefield with regular number of counters. Oh. That's better than I thought then. I didn't think that. Oh, all right. See, now we're talking. Hold on. Let's talk. Let me, hold on. Now I have to stop and do some math. Let's evaluate. Yeah. All right. So we're paying how much? We said for six? Six mana total. Okay. Oh, so the X. Yeah. So it becomes so a four, X four. is four. So it's a four, four flying trampler that you draw two and gain two off of. That That's pretty good. That's not bad. No. And also it's a cast trigger. So I, even if it gets countered, yeah. you're still drawing the two and gain two. I don't two. think it's busted. I don't think it's. Okay. I, I need to make a deck. What happens? It's, it's on your seat. Oh. I don't need to make a deck out of this card. But I think it's got potential. I agree. Yep. Put it on the list. Plus, it's got some sweet art. All right. We did it. That's a Jellyfish large, but... Hydra Beast. Oh, it's the head. One of the heads. What? What is this? We're just going to disagree. It's fine. It's whatever. Prime Seeker Vanifer. It, Vanifer. It's the... Uh, this is the Birthing Pod card that everyone everyone has been rumbling about. It's about four it. mana for a 2-4. Sacrifice another creature. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to plus one plus equal to one plus the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost. So unlike Birthing Pot, it's only one higher than two higher. Uh, put that card on the battlefield and shuffle your library. You can only use this, same as Birthing Pod, whenever you could cast a sorcery. Birthing Pod was two higher? Yes. Are you being serious? Hold on. So if I sacrifice a three drop with Birthing Pod, you I get a five, five drop. drop? Yeah. No way. Are you serious? Well, I, never, I never played Birthing Pod. Never played it. I was never, it was never. Oh, never. Birthing Pod is one. No, it's one. It's literally Birthing Pod. Yeah. I was what like, am I thinking of? I'm thinking of Eldritch, Eldritch Evolution. Evolution. Eldritch Evolution is two. Yeah. You're right. So, I mean, thoughts on this card? I don't think it's playable. Do you really not? Hell yeah, I think it's playable. Oh my God. It will be played. It's not a tier one strategy. There's not enough oppressive cards or Shav. Shav Syndicate. Shav Syndicate. Or Shav Syndicate. The Orzhov Syndicate. The Orzhov Syndicate. Uh, 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 Orzhov. <sighs> Ooh, that's interesting. With Intruder Alarm, this goes off. Because you can un because the new creature comes and play it, untaps this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this can go off really dumbly in modern, too. This card isn't nuts and broken in standard, though. Like, it's no. just a completely no. fair card. This the, this effect is only as good as the cards as the you, can you can search for. for it. 100%. And, and there's nothing that just... There's no one creature that just says, I win this game right now. That doesn't exist. Not in standard, yes. No. Yes, no. I don't, I don't foresee this being broken in modern because you can't play it for three in modern. It's too fragile. And... Well, because you don't have the mana. Like, it's four mana, not three mm -hmm. mana. Birthing Pod, you can play for three mana, and you could activate it the same turn you played it, which yep. is insane. Mm -hmm. This, you cannot play on turn three. It dies to any creature removal, and you can't play... Like, it dies to Dismember, it dies, it dies to uh, Assassin's Trophy, it dies to uh, Path to Exile. The new Crater Hoof? Okay, now tell me what creature you're sacrificing to get the Crater Hoof. What's your seven we'll, drop that we'll you're wait, sacrificing? We'll wait. No, it's like... <laughs> Correct, but like you're not, you don't have seven drops that you can sacrifice in order to get. And also, how many times are you activating this to have like a seven drop into play? <laughs> We're just climbing, man. To get into eight, like We're you're gonna climbing. sacrifice your five drop, then your six drop, then your seven drop, then your eight drop. Like it's, that's exactly what's happening. Like this is gonna survive. You, you guys are very ambitious as to how many, uh, how many activations you're gonna get off this two for. Is a comma cost nine? <laughs> I don't get it. Anyway, the point is. I'm not sold on this card either. I think it's very fragile as a creature. And I think you can get one or two activations off of it. But anything... Isn't... Hold on. So your ar the argument is that this card is so much value. This card is not value. This card requires you to input a creature in order to generate one. So it's only as good as what you gain from the creature you're searching, right? So I understand that you can say there are cards that when they enter the battlefield, they do something good. But at that same token, you can literally just say the card find is better than this, right? No, she doesn't make any tokens. No, no, no. The creature, like, what do you mean? Did I say that? You said by the same token, and I was just Oh, like, I, just... <laughs> I was like, wait, wait what? Because I was thinking, because like Siege Gang Commander, right? Right. That's a, that's a great card to get with this, and then you sacrifice it. The only card in standard right now that is busted with this effect is the 4-3 Phoenix. Oh, Rekindling Phoenix? Yeah. That seems very good. Right? And then you can get that Siege Gang. Yeah, and then you get Siege Gang, right? And then if you go, oh, I want to get a 6-drop, I sack, sack my Siege Gang, 
then what? You just sacrifice your siege gang for three one ones. Like I mean, that's the, not okay. So the nice thing about what the situation you're describing is that the deck you're playing is just kind of a value deck in general, right? And you're not like committing an entire strategy to playing this one card. And if this dies, you can still just cast siege gang next turn. You can still just cast the six drop next turn. Mm -hmm. I think it's fine, John. What's going on, buddy? Um, I just don't know. I don't think this card is the end all be all of that no. deck. This will never be a tier one strategy. Well, I don't want to say never. That's that's wrong. But in this well, upcoming I see there format, being a tier one strategy that has this in it. I just don't know if this is the card that's making the deck. Tier right. One. So exactly. Okay. I see what you're saying. So you're basically saying like a team or good stuff. Right. And it's yeah. a, it's a nice little it's a nice well, little that, a nice little perk. That's what I said. You know what card this can go in with the the five mana dude that doubles your mana. Tell me. I just did. Oh, you did. Yeah. Which is funny because if you're doubling your mana, like you might as well just cast your creatures then pot into them. You know you what I mean? You do both. Why not both? Hmm. All right, I'm going to go to the next card now. Yeah, go ahead. It's an elf ooze wizard. This lady's made of ooze. She's an ooze. That's weird. She is oozing at the bottom, just like my mom. You said it, not me. I mean, I said it that time, but you said it before. Okay, it's just weird to get confirmation. That's from a me. sweet, sweet this card. This is a fish octopus crab. This is a shark to crab. Nope, that's just a hammerhead. Four, 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 four. No, look at his legs. Look at his little claws. <laughs> look at all of him. There's look at, no little claws. Look at claws. all the pieces of the puzzle. No little claws. This is a four 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 with adapt one, so it becomes a five five for four mana. Whenever whenever you adapt, basically whenever one or more counters are placed on this guy, tap target creature and put in controls. It doesn't untap during its next untap. Are you okay? She said, "Baby <laughs> shark to crab." Do, 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 do. <laughs> we have kids. I have kids. I understand that. It's funny. I understood that reference. All right, we're gonna go to the next. I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. I don't think this. Yeah, is yeah. A... and then the other comment I want to uh, appreciate here is this card is literally a Sci-Fi Channel movie. You are correct. That's true. Yeah, it's it's correct. basically it goes Sharknado, Shark, Shark to, to Crab, crab. <laughs> uh, Simic Ascendancy. This card I haven't read this card yet, but it looks like the kind of card that would get me to get me me Jimmy's yeah me definitely. Jimmy's rumble in here. <laughs> it's a it's a two mana enchantment. So the very least that's that's cheap. Man. And that's there's great. a ton of stuff going on here. Let's see. Put a one one counter on target creature you control for three mana. All right. Whenever one or more counters are put on a creature you control, put that many growth counters on some ascendancy. Okay, so we got some growth counters happening. Yeah. What's that going to do? At the I beginning of your upkeep, if it has 20 or more growth... <gasps> Alternate win conditions! You mean just the win condition? I guess you're attacking with big dudes. Well, you're getting growth counters. Yeah. Getting growth counters. I don't hate this card. It's probably... This card it's, sucks. It's absolutely unplayable, but I don't hate this it. This card's terrible. <clears throat> Maybe we can double the counters. Yes. Twice. Yes. Zagana, Utopian Speaker. Again, another waste of a card. Four, 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 four. That's a good rate. When it enters the battlefield, if you control another creature with a plus one cost counter and draw a card, that's fine. That's a, that's incredibly easy to do. Well, in Merfolk, but Merfolk's unplayable. A or any any Simics, bro. Oh, you know what? It worked again. Hold on, we're doing it, man. This works in a teamer deck with Riot. R Riot puts one one counters. You're right. I am right. Adapt four, so she can become an eight eight. Six oh. mana, six mana is expensive, but it's still a four four for four. So I think the rate on this is fine. That lets you just if you get to draw the card, and it, and it gives itself trample when you do that. Each creature you control with plus multiple counter has trample. Yeah, this is not terrible. I mean, I want more. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's constructed playable. But I don't think it's bad. This is constructed playable if you're running if you're running Prime Speaker or the the Vanifer. You pod for this card, and then you just you throw it away. You throw it right in the garbage. <laughs> Oh, I drew my card. So no, no, we don't think so. No, I don't think it's four, 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 four. But that draws you a card. I don't think it's a bad rate. Don't care. With two other abilities, man. Crap. I don't know. Crap. This is a crab turtle crocodile, a scuttle gator. <laughs> Scu a little scuttle gator. Six, six for six. So automatically we're in limited territory. Defender, <laughs> getting worse. And then for eight goddamn mana, hey. <laughs> as long as it has a one one counter on it, it can attack as though it didn't have defender. Mm. I mean, like, so again, we can you can have like the tricks that like put a one one counter on things. That's fine. You can get around that ability, which is nice. Um, but still, eight mana to adapt is really ridiculous. And I appreciate your existence, Crab Turtle Crocodile. I'm glad you were created in the lab. But we're gonna have to pass. Hey, can you, while we're reading these cards, why don't you tell me what changed in Merfolk that makes it playable? We'll, we'll wait. What change in Mer? Wait. Yeah, because I said Merfolk's unplayable, and they're saying it's a bold statement. So tell me what 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 was Merfolk given that makes it playable? Are you talking about standard? Yeah. I mean, like you, like so. Here's the thing: like, you think if there's not, if it's if a deck isn't one of the top three tier one decks, it's unplayable. And I don't think that's true. I think if you go to F and M, like, and you face like a niche, like, actual 
optimized merfolk deck where all like the standard merfolk like the, the lords the 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 unblockable guys the ones that make extra merfolk like i think if you face that it's actually not just a buy like it's actually playable I think there are tier two and tier three decks in the format. And you think just because it's not tier one, win my F and M week after week deck like, yeah. that it's not playable. You know, I mean, like that being said, if we're talking about modern four man is way immensely too much. playable. Anyway, incubation. I like this card. Look at the top five cards, of your library, you reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Unless you are Alex Burton Cheney, in which you can put any card revealed into your hand. Color, colorless. Put any, just colorful. pick one. Does it, is it a creature? Is it not a creature? Opponent's Doesn't wallet. Matter. You can put them all in there. <laughs> you can put the, put the, put the match slip in there. Whatever you, you want to do. You put, the, put the rest in the bottom of your library. You put the trophy that you win in the tournament. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is good. For one mana, you get to search for any creature. It's an inch of for creatures. It's an inch of for creatures, creatures right. Yep. Incongruity, three mana, exile target creature that, yeah, this is just Pongify for three. That's great. Excel a creature, except you excel it instead of destroy it, which is also strong. Mm -hmm. And they put the the eight, the typical frog lizard token. So not Pongify, rapid hybridization, rather. Hey now, Frank, Rob is historically an FNM champion. That's a good point. At least you recognize. Do you get anything for winning FNM? Um Yeah, I won a whole box. You get to, sometimes you get to feel good about having won an FNM. I get I to gloat about it. I don't understand the and question. And eventually when you gloat about it enough, you don't even have to bring it up and people do it for you. That's true. Boom. Um is this playable? Uh, I'm yeah. You think so? I can't stop being serious. Be serious. I don't know. I'm because I'm trying to. It, it, if there is a if there is a teamer deck, then yes, hundred percent. What if it's just blue green? No, there's not. Well, then yeah. If it, I mean, if there is a a, a deck in Simic colors that plays. Is creatures, there a blue or a green deck without the other color that is worth playing incubation in as like a one mana ancient stirrings? Just no, because you play adventurous hand. impulse. Because of the flexibility on turn one to get a land. Adventurous impulses. You look at the top three cards. You can put a land or a creature in your hand. Top three though. This is top but it's five. land. But it gets land. It's true. I don't know. I'm on the fence about it. Not sold. I would put it down though. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna do it. Not because I like you. I'm gonna do it. But because I feel obligated. He just did it. We did it together. We didn't. I did it by myself. He did it by himself. Repediate. <laughs> Two mana. Counter target activated or triggered ability. Me and Ollie oh. and Trazi have gone over it at length why this card is just hot garbage compared to any of the other split cards. It's embarrassing what they do to Simic. Repudi repudiate is just... This is a rare. It's a rare stifle uh, that costs one extra mana. Replicate is three mana. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. This is literally verbatim the same text on Quasi Duplicate, which is a card from the very last set. So in two Ravnica sets, you have blue cards that do the exact same thing. Uh, let alone Replicate also needs another creature that you like. There's the white one that makes a creature. There's the green. There's the gruel one that makes a creature, and the Simic one you don't. You just have to have your own creature and it'll just make a copy of it. Yeah. So I don't know. This card is terrible. Just terrible. And that's the end of Simic. So for all the Simic, we have Biomancer's Familiar, Frilled Mystic, Growth Spiral, Hydroid Crassus, Prime Speaker Van Affair, and Incubation Incongruity. Those are the playables for this uh, guild. Cycled. Guild. Okay. Guild. Good talk. Good talk. You so having, You having a good day? I'm having a good time. All right, me too. I'm glad you're here. Thanks. You too. So we got Azorius Locket. We have the five lockets. We can just go through those quickly. Those Lock are it. Lock these it. are these are fine. You'll see them played in limited, but you will rarely see three mana lockets played in constructed. It's just not going to happen. Gate Colossus is actually very interesting. It's I played this in limited. It was bonkers. I had a deck with ten guild, ten guild gates, and Whoa. I was playing this on turn five. That's sick. I would go. Yeah, it was. I would go. I would have four lands. I would play my fifth land, which would be a guild gate. And then I would tap the four mana to play this guy on turn f turn five, and it was pretty nuts. And, um, yeah, I don't know. This card is bonkers. I, it, it, the strength of it made me wonder if you could play it in standard because it's really hard to deal with unless they exile it. And it's just – it gets to a point where, like, it costs you – if you have, like, a, a guild-based deck and you have six guilds, five guilds, it costs between zero and three mana, and that's just yeah a ridiculous rate. I don't know if it's – I don't know if it's great, but it's an 8-8. Eight -eight. <laughs> So I think someone will donate for you to build a gate deck in standard where you're running Gates Ablaze, you're running Gate Colossus, you're running Gateway Sneak, like you're running Growth Spiral. You know what I mean? Like some, someone will donate for that and you'll, you'll get a chance to, to play it. Class Glass of the Guild Pact. Two mana. 
Multicolor creature, you can create plus one, plus one. This is interesting. Do you need to take the turn off to play this, to play this card? like hero? Yep. I don't think so, man. I don't either. Eh. Plus, it's kind of narrow. But like the one, the, one of the nice things is that the tokens that are made are black and white, so they're one oh, ones. Oh, Orzhov tokens? So they're two twos. No, 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 not even the... Um, Orzhov. Aren't the Hero of Pre-Saint 1 tokens? Oh, they're not white? They have to be white. They don't have oh, to be. Oh, you know what? Because they're made by multicolored they're spells. Correct. So there's like a multicolor connection. It's a 1-1 one, one white human. But there is... The afterlife tokens are Yeah, that's multicolor. awesome. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Though. Yeah. Sure. Girl Locket, Junk Troller, four mana. This is a classic card. This has been reprinted a bunch of times. Really? Put target card. Yeah, Junk Troller is a, re a reprint. Zero six Defender and puts target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. Uh, there was actually a combo with Junk Troller where you would mill your entire library. You would put one specific card back and then you'd win the game with that. I don't know what the card was, but it was it was a while Lab ago. Lab Maniac. No, this is a while ago. That would work though. I thought the token was wide. <laughs> Orzhov Locket, Orzhov, Orzhov Locket, Locket, Rakdos Locket, Rakdos. Scrabbling Claws, another cool reprint. Another, worse, worse another, artif another Graveyard Toucher, which is interesting. Star player Graveyard card Toucher. From, well, just like junk, junk Troller, they both get cards out of the Graveyard. Uh, sacrifice Scrabbling Claws, Exile Target card from the Graveyard, Draw a Card. This is like this was like a poor man's version of Relic of Progenitus. This was the card people used before Relic was printed. Because uh, the, the first one exiles... Uh, this is the same thing, basically. They tap it to exile a random card. And then the one on this draws you a card and exiles a specific card, whereas the one on Relic of Regenitus draws you a card and exiles the entire graveyard. Where exactly so. in the graveyard did he touch you? <laughs> <laughs> he touched the graveyard gently. Screaming oh my God. shield. This art is... I thought the token was... <laughs> I just I just said that. I know, but the art, that's what he's yelling. The art, that's what he's yelling. You have to just, just be normal, that's all. I was. Doing doing this and like you just now you're being weird. I don't like when you're weird. Sorry. I love you anyway. Take it or leave it. <laughs> is what it is. All right. So one mana equipped creature gets plus zero plus three and has two and a tap. Target player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. Skippa. I'll see you later. Simic locket. Sphinx of the Guild. Every time I look at this, I think it's Sphinx of the Steel Wind. Yeah, because the cut because the, the color the gold yeah. the gold on the artifact. Yeah, seven mana. For a 5-5, five, five. it has all colors, it has hexproof and monocolored, and it has flying. It looks like Dalsum's wearing a, a headdress. It does kind of look like Dalsum. Yeah, that's actually kind of funny. <laughs> and on that note, keep moving. Tome of the Guild Pack, 5 mana. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, draw a card. Make this 3. Add 3, you mean? No, no. Oh, make it cost 3. Make three. it cost 3. It's not even really busted at that point. Yeah, 3. 3 makes it playable. Yeah, but drawing a card for every multicolor spell you cast is pretty nuts. Like you what just draw a card because, for every dragon that you cast. Right, but you're only doing it once a turn, right? All right, so add that effect then. Now we're just changing the whole card. Right. I suck. But so as the as it is, I, I could see adding two mana of any one color. That's cool. Cuz then it's like a it's like a an upgraded gilded lotus. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This card's still interesting. And it's too expensive. It's five mana. It is. Like, you know what? There's so many things I'd rather be doing with five mana than playing a card that might draw me a card the next turn. Hmm. Yeah. All right. And then we have the five guild gates, which are all uh, great and limited. Maybe they'll be playing constructed if there and is a, a guild gate, gate deck. deck. And we have the five yeah. shock, shock lands, lands, which are all just fantastic. Gateway Plaza, again reprinted. So in both sets, in both... Uh, both 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 Ravnica's. I like the gain three life one. The gate. Well, we're not there yet, are we? It doesn't exist. That's some sweet art. Hollowed Fountain, Orza, Orzhov Guild Gate. That looks like they didn't even try. Plaza of Harmony. This doesn't exist? It does now. Oh, interesting. When Plaza of Harmony enters the battlefield, if you control two or more gates, you gain three life. This is actually pretty good. Yeah, especially in Ollie's deck. So if you're, when you have 10 deck, 10 whatchamacallits on the battlefield, you play Lich's Mastery, you play your land for a turn, you draw three cards. It's nice because the one thing you want to do in like the gate deck is you, there is a turn where you want to play on curve, right? So like if you're like, I have a five drop, I will play gate, gate, oh, yeah, gate, yeah, gate yeah. into five drop. And then this is untapped. And this is the nice thing to play on turn five mm -hmm. to make sure like the, the card you need on curve is played on curve. Yep. So it's nice to have a land that comes into play on tap. And it still gains you three life and taps for pretty much any color in that deck. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, kind of cool. I, I like this card a lot. I think this is very good. I'm yep. going to put Plaza down. I mean, given that there is a... Uh, a gate deck. A gate deck, right. <laughs> Rakdos Guildgate, Simic Guildgate, Stomping Ground, and then we're back to Axbane Beast. So, the only thing out of the artifacts and the lands we saw was Plaza of Harmony, and that's just that's, given if that's there's a gate like deck. Thing, yeah. If there's a gate deck. But either way... 
<laughs> that was it. That was part two of the survey. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. I hope as you're still here. As we said last time, we would definitely love uh, if you guys have any comments, definitely leave them on the YouTube video. And that this will be under, you can check me out on Twitch and Patreon. Links are in the description below. You can also check me on these.com slash Frank Laporte. I get you get 15% off along with free shipping and free returns. And the affiliate link you use, which is in the description, gives me a kickback as well. So we both we both we both benefit. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Let us know. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Bye.